furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free. Bring up anything right here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I have dug up the the complaint that has been filed against the 19-year-old... Mohammed Hamza Khan, who allegedly was planning on leaving the United States to travel over to the Middle East and join ISIS. They say that that's a crime. And I don't think that it's a crime unless there's actually a victim. And in this case, all it really is is a thought crime, if anything else. Even if even if you believe that joining ISIS should be a crime, he hadn't actually joined anything at that point. He was just leaving the country. So you tell me what you think at 855-450-FREE. Or you can also join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Now, we don't know yet how the FBI became aware of this. I imagine that will be revealed in this indictment. Yeah, but um, I, I don't believe them anymore. Good after point. the after the Dread Private Roberts uh, situation, where the FBI has uh, lied about how they got the information mm-hmm. on Silk Road, um, and I mean, you know, this is this is the opinion of experts who have looked, who have examined what they claimed was the case, and uh, said, no, no, that's just not true. I, I mean, I. I'm supposed to be part of the government, right? I I keep on coming back to this. I was told I'm part of the government. It's a government of the people, by the people, for the people. That when I vote, that I am actively participating in the government so that we can choose our leaders who are most just, honest, forthright, and able to put uh, society in order. That's the crap I was told in Mm -hmm. school. When I'm lied to by the government bureaucrats that are essentially, you know, indirectly hired by these politicians— I cannot make an honest assessment about who I'm supposed to hire when I vote and who I'm not supposed to hire. This is an inarguable fact that either the government is smarter than we are and cannot and, and should not be giving out information to citizens because that would undermine all the important secrets that they have, or we're a government of the people. You cannot have both. Well, there's no shortage of lies from government agencies, especially the FBI. I mean, uh, the FBI was testifying in the case against Rich Paul, our friend who's currently in jail, uh, serving off some probation time for being convicted for selling pot. And the FBI agent involved in that case was uh, Phil Christiana, and it was proven in court he was lying. I mean, it was absolutely the case that he or it was either he or the state police who were telling a lie. And... Given the testimony in court, I believe that it was Phil Christiana who was the one who was lying in that case. And by the way, the FBI, one thing we learned from that case, they don't record their interviews with people. So if they want to concoct something, there's no way you can prove that they're lying about it unless you happen to have enough information to, you know, so if you get your own recording or something like that. If they're interviewing somebody, some suspect or an arrestee, they just take notes. 
That's so, crazy. Yeah. So anyway, we'll continue here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Join us on Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. There's a little bit more here from the NBC Chicago report on this 19-year-old who was a- arrested trying to leave O'Hare International Airport on what was alleged to be a $4,000 round-trip ticket to the Middle East. Still, it's not known who had paid for that $4,000 ticket. It's got to be pretty pricey. I mean, that's pretty pricey. Well, yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah, 18-year-old. Yeah, it's a good question. He's 19. The affidavit alleges that he left a letter for his parents asking them to not contact the police. The letter read there was an obligation to migrate to the Islamic State now that it has been established, saying that he was upset that he had to pay taxes to uh, to uh that would be used to kill people in the Middle East. He said, quote, I'm upset about that, too. The letter it allegedly me to go join the other folks. Well, but yeah, but Mark, that shows that that is an example of how it is that the government creates unintended consequences for their actions because the government is over there perpetrating violence against people, many of whom are innocent people because they're over there killing innocent people and they're taxing Americans to do it, it's inevitable that some Americans are going to be upset about the fact that they're forced to pay for this violence, that they themselves will be willing to engage in violence. That's exactly what's supposedly happened here. Again, we're taking all of this from the FBI's affidavit, which may or may not be honest in what it's uh, relaying. According to the affidavit, uh, the letter that he wrote to his parents read, quote, We are all witness that Western societies are getting more immoral day by day. I don't want my kids being exposed to filth like this, unquote. He also extended an invitation to his family to join him. Khan's boiling Bolingbroke neighbors are upset and concerned about the arrest. One neighbor, Daniel Arnold, said, quote, I see people there every day. Or I see the people every day when I'm coming home from work doing whatever they do across the street there. You never think you have terrorists living on the same block as you. Mm. That's scary. A couple of my friends were like, watch out for that house. And I said, don't be like that. And lo and behold, they were right, I guess, said neighbor Steve Moore. If convicted, Khan could face a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. Well, first of all, this guy's not a terrorist. He hasn't hurt anyone yet, nor has he threatened to hurt anyone. Because you can you can be a terrorist without setting off a bomb. If you call in a bomb threat to somewhere, that makes you a terrorist, because then you're using the threat of violence to change how people behave and to attempt to influence society. This guy hasn't been alleged to have done anything like that. He's never been alleged to have built a bomb, threatened anyone with a bomb, shot anybody, or done anything violent whatsoever. He was thinking about joining and taking alleged actions toward joining ISIS. And I just don't see what the crime is. Well, I, 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 like I said, I don't think there, has, there hasn't been a crime committed. Right. If a uh, young man was sitting outside of a uh, convenience store that he intended to rob with a gun in his lap, thought about it again, to, had a second thought, decided, I don't want to do this, turned around, you know, left the parking lot and drove away, I wouldn't want to see that person put in jail. In other ISIS-related news, and I'm going to dig through this uh, affidavit or this uh, indictment here when I get a chance, and we'll see if we can learn anything else from that. But uh, the in other ISIS-related news, this one we didn't get to this weekend because we were at the Coins in the Kingdom event in Disney World, and we're just so busy with talking to folks from that event, we didn't get this news out that there has been yet another, uh, yet another beheading video. I, I think we're up to three that have come from the same producers with the the guy with the British accent yeah. uh, that is allegedly doing the beheading. And then there was the other one that we heard about from uh, the group that beheaded the Frenchman, but that was a different ISIS group. So the same guy, the same guy dressed in black, outside, outdoors, with a man kneeling next to him wearing an orange shirt. That series of videos, mm-hmm. there's been another one. Uh, this one was released Friday, purporting to show an Islamic State group fighter beheading British hostage Alan Henning. The fourth such killing carried out by the extremist group now targeted in U.S.-led airstrikes. This according to the AP. The video mirrored other beheading videos shot by the Islamic State group, which now holds territory along the border of Syria and Iraq, and ended with a militant threatening a man they later identified as an American named Peter Kassig. Uh, the masked militant in the video said, quote, Obama, you have started your aerial bombardment of Shams, which is Syria, which keeps on striking our people, so it is only right that we continue to strike the neck of your people, unquote. National Security Council spokesman he- Caitlin Hayden confirmed that Kasich was being held by Islamic State militants in a statement issued Friday evening. How long had this guy that uh, got executed been there in the Middle East? Not clear. Okay. 
And what was he doing? Who, the guy Journal- that was journalist? executed? Uh, b- the British man, Alan Henning, according to the AP, was held hostage. Uh, it's not really said here what exactly he was allegedly doing there. I'm not sure about that. I can find that information for you, Mark, but I just don't have it in Do you think these people are uh, heroes that, that are going over there? Because, uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going to continue to happen over time, right? Um, well, most of these guys they've had in captivity for a few years. A couple, the, the last ones that have been executed, uh, they've been there for a two, yeah. two, three years, something like that. So I'm going to do my best to see if we can drag this video out from the depths of the internet and uh, share the audio track with you as we have done. And some may argue that we shouldn't be doing that, that uh, that we're giving attention, unnecessary attention to this violence. And I don't support violence. I, I don't. But I feel like it's my obligation to do this, to bring the news out. I know? don't feel like we get the whole story. I don't think we're anywhere near the whole story no. on, on a lot of this stuff. And that's the reason, because what what news agencies do is they're supposed to provide both sides of a story. And I don't feel like we get both sides of the story in most cases. So I want to know. Also, I found these videos um, coming out of Syria from ISIS to be highly suspect. They're weird. And I don't know what that's about. We'll come back with more. Your thoughts are welcome at 855-450-FREE. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Take control toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features we have waiting for you there. Once again, that is freetalklive.com. There's more uh, news here where there's yet another beheading video. We were just barely kind of scratching the surface of that story. I'm also reading through the indictment against a 19-year-old who was arrested in... The airport at O'Hare, an international airport in Chicago, for ostensibly trying to join ISIS. And of course, it's always interesting to read through this sort of stuff because they don't, you know, they don't give you the whole story uh, in the mainstream media. In fact, it can be somewhat difficult to find these things. I did search for the indictment and looked for a PDF and was able to pull it up directly from the Fed's own. Uh, website here, so we'll get a little bit more information. Of course, this isn't the whole story either. This is just the Fed's version of the story. Who knows what uh, Mr. Khan would have to say for himself. You're welcome to share your thoughts. Our toll-free number at 855-453. You can join us online, and you can also uh, connect via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. But maybe Mr. Khan needed a little bit more privacy in his life. Uh, If you care about privacy, you really need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network, and it encrypts your online data. Your internet service provider is probably logging everything you do online, saving your surfing history, and that's a little bit invasive. They could easily turn that information over to any law enforcement agency that asks for it. You can stop that from happening by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. You might be saying to yourself, but I don't have anything to hide. I'm not planning on joining uh, ISIS, etc., You never know what these government guys will consider is illegal. You don't know what all their laws are. Well, I don't know what happened with uh, Khan at this point either. In this country, uh, he has the presumption of innocence. So, therefore, he's just a guy that might have been trying to go to Syria. So, go and get yourself ProXPN. Get started with it because you never know what you'll be doing that the government will consider illegal. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50 to get 50% off the price of the annual account. That's their premium account. You can start for free and try it out, but you're going to want that premium account because you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world to access, and the ability to privately torrent. Now, if you're the average American, especially if you're the average American under the age of, I don't know, 40, Odds are good at some point you've torrented something. You know, maybe it's a movie or a, a new CD that's come out. Well, guess what? That's illegal, too. Now, I'm not saying you should do illegal things with uh, your torrenting, but you can have private torrenting through ProXPN. So, again, ProXPN.com slash FTL. You can also pay with Bitcoin and use code FTLBTC to get 62% off of the annual account. So, a lot of people think that this, you know, downloading a CD is this innocuous thing. Everybody does it, right? Well, just because everybody does it doesn't mean it's not illegal. Uh, ProXPN.com. That's certainly true. Slash FTL. Go and get started. Don't forget promo code FTL50 or FTLBTC. Plus, they also give you the access to those servers around the world, which means that you can access like the server in the Netherlands, which has the best privacy protections of all of the different locations where ProXPN has legal, servers. Legal protections. That's right. Uh, so ProXPN, that's because the Netherlands has the best laws on that. Uh, on that front. ProXPN.com slash FTL. It's a great discount on privacy. 
that is priceless. And you get around regionally blocked websites, you get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. So protect yourself. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Johnny Ray joining us. Uh, better late than never. Good evening, Johnny Ray. Good evening. It's a little... I'm a, I'm a little sorry to break up the party. This is classic well, FTL right here. We've got uh, some terrible news about this young man, uh, 19 years old, arrested for just going to the airport. He was ostensibly going to join ISIS. The police found uh, some stuff in his house. Apparently, they were given a heads up, according to this uh, according to this document here, the indictment by the FBI. They were given information from Austrian Airlines all the way back on September 26th that round-trip tickets were purchased for Mr. Khan. And then on October 4th, that was when Khan was observed by law enforcement passing through a security checkpoint. Uh, he did have those tickets, and they gave him, or they they took him into you know back room, and they started questioning him. Apparently, they claim that he waived his Miranda rights during that questioning. Mm. They, but of course, the difficulty with uh, the the FBI is is you never know what you know what they say is true and what it's not. Correct. When dealing with uh, you know when dealing with local police, you get an audio recording. Of people waiving their Miranda rights, at least in many of the many of the occasions, um, with the FBI, they just take their word for it. Yeah, they just write stuff down with a pen and paper. So, in what appeared to be a common room, agents recovered a handwritten notebook. This is from his home. So they searched at the same time. So on October fourth, while Khan was at the airport, law enforcement agents executed a search warrant at residence number one during that search that's where they discovered the alleged handwritten documents that appear to be drafted by Khan and or other persons which expressed alleged support for isil so some of the things that they found included a page that contained the word purchased with the following steps one four thousand dollar ticket to istanbul cred two supplies via credit card three cash for hotel in istanbul seventy dollars four bus ride to esekir Five, Esekir to Koya to Adana. Six, get in touch with, and then a list of four individuals, including individual C. We're not sure who that is yet. Most likely to go, and number seven, most likely to go to Urfa. Above this list was a drawing of what appeared to be the United States and Turkey. That drawing included an arrow from the United States to northwest Turkey, two arrows across Turkey, and one arrow pointing across what appeared to be the border of Turkey and Syria or Iraq. I mean, this just all sounds too ridiculous to be true really i mean a teenager is gonna draw a map and draw arrows all over it i don't know maybe it's plausible but it seems i like- don't know i mean i couldn't say one way or the other whether it's true or not but uh you know the difficulty why when- wouldn't he use google maps i mean to hand draw a picture of the united states and then hand draw turkey and draw an arrow over to it i, I admit that there's seems juvenile I-, I admit it's all very odd obvi- odd um I mean, I don't know. Maybe the FBI's had a had, it's been a little too long since they caught themselves their last terrorist, and they need to, they need a new one. I don't I don't know. Maybe that's it's, what I wanted. I wonder about this, right? Like, who were these individuals who were involved? That they're is not there going to be any testimony in this? Um, you know, from whom exactly? How's know. it going to work? It would be very interesting. Those were the, some of the documents that were recovered from his from the search of his home. That was one of the documents. That was just one page with those things written onto it. Uh, they also found a page with a drawing in the following words in Arabic, the commander of the ranks under Abu Bakir al-Baghdadi, Abu Maraya al-Hariri, and the commander of the ranks. A page that included the following words in Arabic, Islamic State in Iraq and Levant, here to stay. We are the lions of the war, unintelligible, my nation, the dawn has emerged. <laughs> You're not the lions of the war. Um, the Islamic State is going to fall uh, to the e- extreme power of the U.S. This is I, this is what I don't get about these people, uh, the Islamic State specifically, is they are pumping themselves up, and do they really, does one of them think that they're going to be able to take on the full force of the U.S. government? I mean, right here, they're lopping the heads off of innocents because they can't do anything about a drone. I mean, these people are stupid. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know about that, Mark. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out how things go over time. I, I see you're predicting the success of the United States government, and certainly they have superior air firepower. It's really kind but, of important. Uh, I would have predicted that, uh, that that the U.S. I would have predicted back in 2003 that the U.S. was poised to create a viable, safe, 
Western style democracy in Iraq, I would have predicted that that mm. we also would have been victorious in Afghanistan. Didn't work but, out. But the the tribes have defeated the U.S. Right. I mean, in that uh, ISIS video that we played with John Cantley doing the narration, I thought he made some good points. These guys have been at this for decades. These guys are, you know, even though ISIS is new, the people who make it up aren't necessarily a bunch of noobs. And they're defending. Uh, if you're on the defense, you always have some level of an advantage. And if they want to totally destroy ISIS, they're going to have to put in some ground troops. And they pointed they're out they're not that on the, the defense. Syrian- these these people, um, in, in many cases. Cases aren't even from Iraq. Um, I, I don't think that they're going. I don't think they they're have on a the shot. Defense because they're there. My prediction is that seventy-five uh, percent of the people that are in the leadership positions of ISIS today will be dead in three years. They will. They will wish that their heads were cut off because they will probably die with greater suffering. That's my prediction. Well, there's always somebody else who will step into their shoes. Yeah, but that doesn't make ISIS successful. What they were, th- their claim is specifically, their claim is they're creating a specific caliphate. That caliphate doesn't exist without a caliph. Okay, the guy in charge. If the guy in charge got blown into little bitty pieces by a, a, a hellfire missile, they don't have a caliphate. So they're wrong. They're crazy people. That doesn't mean that they won't be able to defend uh, the position. The United States taken. is never going to be successful taking over the Middle East, right. Ian. I know the position you're taking, okay. but this guy will be in little tiny red chunks splattered all over the no, desert he won't. floor. He's going to be in custody. He's been Not arrested this by guy. the feds. Not this guy. Talking about the uh, which guy? Uh, Baghdadi. About the caliphate or whatever. Uh, I, I have to look. Is that his name, Baghdadi? Yeah. yeah. A page with drawings was found, appearing to depict the ISIL flag and that of another designated foreign terrorist organization. And yet another page had an armed fighter drawn on it with an ISIL flag behind him. Or maybe it was a picture of it. Not really clear on that. We're coming up here. We'll give you more on the way. Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Beautiful Bellwood flooring just got even better with twice the scratch resistance and four times the abrasion resistance of other brands. And right now, Lumber Liquidators has exclusive deals on Bellwood with savings up to 40%. Choose from over 140 varieties, including Brazilian cherry, American walnut, even Bellwood's hot new matte finish that gives you that oil finished look without all the maintenance. All with a transferable 100-year warranty. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest to you. First ever 36-month financing is available. But hurry, these amazing deals end Tuesday. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, October 7, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,196. Silver around $17.03. And Bitcoin is trading around $334. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news today, 
On Monday, the Supreme Court decided not to rule on several lower court rulings involving same-sex marriage, effectively legalizing the marriages in 11 states. The decision will go into effect immediately in five states, including Virginia, Indiana, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, and Utah. In the other six states, the attorney generals will either make the practice legal or pursue the issue further in court. With the decision, same-sex marriages are now legal in 30 states. An American video journalist who contracted Ebola while working in Liberia stepped off a jet Monday under his own power on his way to a Nebraska hospital where he will be treated for the disease in a specialized containment unit. At the bottom of the jet steps, 33-year-old Ashoka Mukpo was loaded onto a stretcher for the ambulance ride to the Nebraska Medical Center. Mukpo was working as a freelance cameraman for NBC News when he became ill last week. He's the fifth American with Ebola to return to the U.S. for treatment during the latest outbreak. Over the weekend, activists performed a flash mob song in protest at the St. Louis Symphony in honor of slain Ferguson teenager Michael Brown. The St. Louis Dispatch reports the symphony musicians were preparing to play when two members of the audience stood up and sang, Which Side Are You On? Other protesters stood up and joined in while dropping banners over the balconies. One of the banners read, Racism Lives Here. Activists have continued to call for the indictment and arrest of Officer Darren Wilson. Large protests and civil disobedience are expected this coming weekend. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries. Homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated. Helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, October 7th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com, the Liberty Beat. New documents obtained by Judicial Watch confirm that deceased al-Qaeda leader Anwar al-Awlaki worked with the FBI following the 9-11 attacks. Judicial Watch has obtained over 900 pages of documents that detail emails and voicemails between al and an FBI agent in 2003. The news marks the second time the cleric was tied to the U.S. government. In 2010, it was reported that he dined at the White House in the days following September 11th as part of an informal outreach program. The documents confirm suspicions that al was likely an asset of the U.S. government. The Veterans Affairs Department said it's firing four senior executives as officials move to crack down on wrongdoing following a nationwide scandal over long wait times for veterans seeking medical care and falsified records covering up the delays. The dismissals are the first since Congress passed a law this summer, making it easier for veterans who experience delays to get care outside VA's nationwide network of hospitals and clinics. The law also made it easier for the agency to fire senior officials suspected of wrongdoing shortening their appeals process to 28 days. A member of the Filipino House of Representatives has introduced legislation that would mandate the creation of an El Peso and research of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. If passed, the Filipino Central Bank would study the technology of Bitcoin and post-Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. It's not yet known how the El Peso would be implemented or if it would coexist with Bitcoin. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at TheConsciousResistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, October 7th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It's the Onion Radio News. Teen sex is linked to alcohol and drugs by the Center for Figuring Out Really Obvious Things. This is Doyle Redland reporting. An exhaustive four-year, $23 million study of substance abuse and sexual habits of more than 2,500 American teens has confirmed that young people between the ages of 13 and 18 who drink and or use drugs are more likely to be sexually active. Dr. Gerald Eckersley is director of the Boston-based organization. 
We found that this phenomenon also occurs among adults as well as every population everywhere in the world that has ever existed since the dawn of time. The center has sent a teleprompter-ready press release of its findings to more than 400 local TV news affiliates across the U.S., along with stock video footage of beer displays and teens smoking and drinking at parties. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You bring up whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Coming up, Johnny Ray will uh, take things home here. We've been talking about international news, but... Uh, There's news about the baby that was killed in a police raid. Maybe you remember the one where they tossed a flashbang or something like that? Oh, he wasn't? No, just uh, severe damage to his face. He did get some plastic surgery, too. Oh, my gosh. He he might have wanted to die, I think. Well, I don't know what a baby that young wants. The I recall reading that he was likely disfigured for life. Flashbang went off right next to the the head of a sleeping infant. It blew wow. open his chest and right in his face. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah. I uh, I misunderstood that. But story. he is still alive. We'll get to the details on that. Johnny Ray has that story, and we were talking about ISIS and some of the latest news out of uh, the Middle East. Actually, in the case of the, m- the main story from the first hour of the show was the 19-year-old who has been arrested in O'Hare Airport for allegedly attempting to join ISIS. Would love to hear your thoughts on whether or not that should actually be a crime. According to some of the comments on our Facebook profile, apparently some people think that it is. Jeremy Michael responds, because I posted the article about this, He says, sorry, leaving the U.S. to fight for a terror organization isn't thought crime, it's treason. Please stop spewing BS and read the Constitution you claim to love. Well, um, I don't claim to love the Constitution. It's a piece of paper. Um, I think that uh, they're, you know, likely... I think I could sit down, uh, having seen 200 and something years of the Constitution, sit down and write a better document, frankly. Um, But, you know... That's just me. Secondarily, I would also say that uh, what what does the Constitution have to do with this? I th- yes, the United States government does get to to one of the like four things the Constitution lets the federal government do is dictate what treason is. Mm-hmm. Um, they 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 are able to pass the laws. I mean that's a power that they have. But I I just you know obviously this gentleman isn't listening. But uh, you know I mean I, I I think that a person should be able to change their mind. Well, that's true. I mean, the young man wasn't actually convicted of hurting anybody. I was reading through his indictment here by the federal goons, and it it doesn't really reveal how it was that they came to suspect him in the first place beyond the that he bought a ticket, uh, beyond, beyond that uh, Austrian Airlines reported to the FBI in late September that a ticket was purchased by someone for this gentleman uh, in order to take him to Turkey. And I think that's sufficient, frankly. Um, right now, the you know the Western governments, Great Britain, United States specifically, are keeping very close eye on who's headed over to Syria to fight for uh, ISIL or ISIS or IS or whatever they yeah, are. So it may have just been that they you know they they saw they they wanted to talk to this guy that they didn't know much more than that he had purchased a ticket and that they wanted to interview him and then when they got him in a room and said whatever they said, he gave up his Miranda rights and went ahead and talked. And and that could have been all it really was. Wouldn't be the first time. So we don't know if there's more detail as far as like somebody who was an FBI agent attempting to talk him into this. That information obviously... Wouldn't be the first time on that either. That's correct. That information obviously is not being revealed in the FBI's own documents here. They claim that he waived his Miranda rights both verbally and he signed a form to consent to waive his Miranda rights. And during that interview... Khan advised that individual C, whom he had met online, had provided him the phone number of a person Khan was supposed to contact. Once he arrived in Istanbul, the contact was to take Khan to where ISIS was. When asked where that was, Khan said the area in Syria in Iraq and Iraq. Khan said he also planned on remaining there permanently and that he knew he would be arrested if he returned to the United States. When asked what he was going to do there, Khan advised that he expected to be involved in some type of public service, a police force, humanitarian work, or a combat role, which could be just about anything. 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So that's kind of a summary of that in the, you know the previous segment that we had in the last hour. Kind of a summary of what the indictment says in this particular case. So if you believe what the feds have to say, they received info. This guy bought a ticket. They opened an investigation. They raided his house at the same time as he was at the airport while he was being interviewed at the airport. He gave up information to them on a supposedly voluntary basis, and they have now charged him with a uh, felony that could result in him being in prison for 15 years. And I think it's it's horrible uh, what they've done to this young man. I sympathize with the kid. I, I know uh, when you're when you're 19, you you know you're 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 hard charging, you want to go out and change the world and you you've kind of I, I'm speaking personally. When I was that age, I had a very black and white uh, thought about how the world worked. And I joined the Marine Corps. I thought that the, that America was the greatest force for good in the world. Mm. And I believe that that's what the Navy says in their new ad. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> and uh, so, so he he went out and and did this. Um, wanted to travel to Turkey, travel to Syria, fight for what he thought was was right. And I feel for him. Well, I've got to say, I don't have much sympathy for them for him. Um, what my concern is is the law. And the law, as I understand these things, and it, you know, like this, it all comes out of English common law. And the idea is, is that there needs to be a victim. In this circumstance, no one has been harmed. This is somebody who apparently drew some pictures. Um, maybe he likes ISIS, ISIL, whatever it is, for whatever reason he likes it. But I want to know that he's committed a crime. I want to know that there's a victim. I want to. I want to see who's been harmed. I don't think. That just because a person decides to leave the country, even if, even if joining ISIS is a crime, he hadn't done it yet. He'd just gone, you know, he might have changed his mind. He might have got there to Turkey and said, you know what, this is nuts. I'm going home. One of the other comments from Irvin Phillips on our Facebook profile, which, by the way, you can go to facebook.freetalklive.com to find that. Uh, Irvin says, I'll have to part with my natural, extremely libertarian ways here. He doesn't say anything further, but I think the suggestion is that he would support uh, what happened to this young man, that he's parting from his extremely libertarian ways. And if you are an, a libertarian, then you don't just part from your viewpoint because you happen to be scared about some terrorist organization. Uh, if you are a liberty-minded person, you don't believe that people should be threatened and uh, used, had force used against them, the initiation of force used against them to achieve political or social goals. And that's what the government and that's what the state does. So to, to take their side on this, I don't think is very freedom-oriented. Bill Clark says, so he's going from Chicago to Istanbul via Vienna on Saturday, then going to f uh, fight with ISIS and return home on Thursday? Makes perfect sense. Also, why is it that all these arrests for alleged terrorists or school shootings always leave notes detailing their motives? Seems like a bit curious to me. I mean, seriously, it's a 19-year-old is a 19-year-old kid going overseas for five. Excuse me, it's a 19-year-old kid going overseas for five days. He's going to write a note telling his parents not to talk to the police. Who the f would do that? Well, first of all, he, uh, if you really are going to join ISIS. You don't want to. Uh, you're not going to be staying there for five days. You are going to be but staying was, there. What his claim is is I, apparently is this. This is a round trip ticket. Right. You generally want to buy a round trip ticket so it doesn't look as suspicious. You know? Okay. Like if you're uh, if you're going to be doing drug couriering, for instance, you uh, don't want to buy a one way ticket because mm. that sets off red flags. Basically. Okay. Yeah. So it was smart to buy a round trip ticket, but apparently that still didn't prevent them from investigating him, according to the indictment. So toll free number tonight, 855 450 free. We'll talk about some local bad cops here in a little bit, but I've actually got the video of the newest alleged beheading. Still don't know much about the victim in this case, Alan Henning, uh, the British gentleman that has allegedly been beheaded, but it's it's actually a fairly short video. This one, uh, it opens up with a clip from what appears to be a Sky News or some sort of BBC News presentation uh, where they're talking about the, oh, uh, deliberating uh, blah, blah, blah bombings, you know, explaining that the UK government has joined the United States in the bombings of Syria. And so then it goes on to fade to black and then fade back into where we're used to seeing these videos outside in a desert location, a man kneeling with an orange shirt on flanked by the man dressed in black and a mask uh, who's holding a knife. This one is only about a minute and 
10 seconds long, and the first 26 seconds are the intro, so the remainder less than a minute uh, is all of what we're going to play for you here. That's coming up. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Plus, Johnny Ray will tell us, did the police who in, uh, were involved in the shooting, which burned the face of an infant, will they be held responsible? We'll find out. Take your guess. It's Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Officials for the Centers for Disease Contraction and Preservation held a press conference urging all Americans to suck on as many doorknobs as possible. This flu season, the Center for Disease Contraction is recommending that all Americans, regardless of age or health condition, find a doorknob in a high traffic area, wrap their mouths around it, and vigorously lick and suck it until they contract an illness. We recommend sucking doorknobs covered in a visible film of human hand grease. But the fact is, sucking on any doorknob can increase the likelihood of exposing yourself and your family to deadly pathogens by as much as 450%. An instructional video released on the CDC's website showcases the proper method for sucking doorknobs while also providing tips for projecting all sneezes and coughs outward, sharing used Kleenexes and toilet paper with as many people as possible, eating three meals a day from local garbage cans, and dozens of other easy bacteria spreading activities. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Aren't you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Well, stop using their money. There's an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. And by using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. 
This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features we have for you there. Uh, you can get interactive with other Free Talk Live listeners. Those other talk show hosts, they charge you for their websites. Ours is free. That's freetalklive.com. Now, maybe you'd like to... You know, send a little something toward Free Talk Live as a thank you. We've got the Bitcoin tip jar. Go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com. You'll find our tip jar address there. Just drop in whatever you feel is appropriate. And if you don't have any Bitcoin yet, you can get some pretty easily by going to expresscoin.com. From the United States or Canada, you can get hooked up with not just Bitcoin, but also Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, and even Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. In fact, if you order less than $40 worth of cryptocurrency there and use code FTL as your coupon code, you'll get that bit uh, get that bitcoin sent to you for no fee whatsoever uh so you you know you've got to pay for the bitcoin itself but there's no transfer fee on top of that right uh, so expresscoin.com has one of the lowest transaction fees out there among any company that you can buy bitcoins from yeah if you buy more than 40 dollars, you probably will not find a lower fee it's three percent last time i looked but they will waive that lowest fee simply by if you enter coupon code FTL and you buy less than $40 worth because it's really meant for people who are buying small amounts and for people that are, you know, first time. Yeah, first time. Yeah, first timers. So uh, money order check, wire transfer, depositing cash at a local credit union with shared banking. Those are all options for you when you use Express Coin. So it's very easy and it's fast. ExpressCoin.com. Coupon code FTL. So I got the video here, and then Johnny Ray will uh, take us back here to the United States with an update on the police who had fired a uh, some sort of a flashbang grenade into a crib, landed next to an infant, and severely burned, disfiguring that infant. Apparently the infant did not die in this, but uh, they're not going to look very pretty throughout their whole life. We'll uh, get you more information about what happened there. But here's the latest message to America and its allies. And this was posted on a Netherlands journalism site, thepostonline.nl. Because, again, coming across these videos is not exactly an easy thing to do. Here is, and it's not also, it's also not an easy thing to watch, even though they don't actually show the beheading itself. Like the past three videos that we've talked about here uh, the, the the video does fade out after the man with the knife begins to allegedly cut the victim's neck and then fades back in to show the corpse with the beheaded head on top of that uh, that corpse. None of which makes any sense to me. I mean, if they're trying to strike fear into the heart of uh, Westerners and Americans, why not show the whole deal? Well, I... I was wondering that myself when we first started to hear about these videos. Maybe the reason is they want more people to see it. You think? Because, for instance, when, when we— Is it working? I don't know. When we first talked about this, I would not watch the video because I had seen the Nick Berg video, which that's got to be a decade old now at this point. Yeah. Uh, and the Nick Berg video looked like it was shot on a BlackBerry. It was very, very grainy. It was not a particularly good video quality. But it was gross, and it was horrifying to uh, to watch that because there was the actual beheading that took place on the video. And so knowing how awful that was, I did not want to see that happen again. And I certainly didn't want to see it happen in HD, which these new videos are very, very high quality. Yeah. And so when we heard that, oh, well, no, they don't actually behead anyone, that the beheading actually doesn't – it's not shown on the, on the video itself, that was what convinced us to go and watch it. So maybe they feel like this will make it penetrate more eyeballs or something like that. I had no I intention know. of watching it until I found out that right. you'd actually see the beheading. So here's the audio track from the video that fades in after they play a brief clip from a British uh, newscast sort of announcing the uh, British involvement in the bombings in Syria and Iraq. Here we go. I am Alan Henning. Because of our parliament's decision to attack the Islamic State, I, as a member of the British public, will now pay the price for that decision. Now, this is a, the briefest video yet. Usually they're a few minutes long, and usually the statement from the victim runs on longer than this. This one's fairly brief uh, on both of their parts. Now the man dressed in black with the knife speaks up. The blood of David Haynes was on your hands, Cameron. Alan Henning will also be slaughtered, but his blood is on the hands of the British Parliament. And he begins to slice 
Henning definitely is, he looks like he's in pain. He, you can hear a, a muffled grunt as the slicing begins, and he certainly sort of jerks backward as, as that happens. So it doesn't look like it's, you know, it doesn't look like he's not going at him with some force. But of course, like the previous videos, you don't see any blood. It fades out before there's, there's several slices, several kind it's of It's fascinating tugs. to me that there's several slices in these videos and there's no blood. Yeah, from a, from a very, you know, uh, bloody area of your body. I mean, there's some pretty serious veins running through your neck that are easy to access. So Fascinating. Yeah, it's very strange. And so it once again fades right back out and then fades in to show uh, the alleged aftermath, which is a pan of the man's uh, alleged body and a severed head sitting And by a pan, the you mean it, it, the, the camera passes over the person. Correct. Yeah, it goes from uh, foot to head or where, where his head was. Oh, my. You have started your air bombardment in Sham, which keeps on striking our people. So it's only right we continue to strike the necks of your people. And that is where he is holding his next victim, uh, who is American Peter Edward Kassig. And I don't know much about him. I think he's military. That's, I believe, the case there. Any thoughts, gentlemen? Pretty soon they're going to run out of these folks. Um, you know, the United States is going to kill these people. This guy on this video, he's going to be found and he's he's going to be executed. Okay. That's what my prediction is. Well, they, uh, there has been some, some suggestion as to who this man is, the yep. masked man. Jihadi John, as he's being called. I forget what his alleged uh, real name is, but wasn't he like some British rapper or something That's like the, that? That's the allegation is, yeah. is that he may be this rapper guy. Right. Uh, so, yeah, maybe they will find he's this guy. certainly got a good voice. Maybe they will find this guy, and maybe they will execute him, but that, as you pointed out earlier, Mark, will not end the violence. That will not end the uh, the beheadings. It will not end the, the kidnappings. And nothing will stop until someone finally breaks the chain of violence. And... It won't be the U.S. government. Unfortunately, it should be. You know, if the if the government really did want to stop the violence in the Middle East, they should stop their role in it and withdraw all the United States troops from overseas and bring them back to the United States, and then issue some sort of statement saying that we're sorry, we made a mistake, and we shouldn't have uh, we shouldn't have gone and bombed anybody ever. Well, honestly, I don't think uh, that the United States government. Okay, the United States government has gotten itself into this sticky wicket um, on their own. You shouldn't deal with terrorists. I get the idea that they've you know, they're dealing with here, but they should have been there in the first place. What I'm saying the well, very now. first execution was uh, one execution too much, and it's because the United States' involvement there. Now, if the United States withdraws, it, and obviously it's not going nope. to. I mean, that's you know, that's non, it's nonsense this talk. This is what they do. They do violence. You know, the U.S. military isn't going to withdraw. It isn't going to go back to its borders. But at that point, then, you can get Washington to do whatever you want by grabbing some U.S. citizen and cutting their head off, or at least pretending to cut their head off. I'm mm. not entirely sure what I see on these videos. I really am not. Sure. And again, we don't even know if it's actually ISIS or whatever. Who, who knows who's producing these videos? Well, the folks that I speak to, these videos do seem to affect them in such a way that they are ready to support the military. The US. Yeah, the, the military, the U.S. military actions that are unfolding now, the so airstrikes, boots on the ground. Maybe it's the CIA who's making these videos. Who knows? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. More coming up here in moments. You can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? 
liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free, and bring up whatever's on your mind. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. And I just realized the entire show tonight, I've been looking at the wrong phone screening software. So apologies to everybody that's been on hold the entire time. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, my bad there. Toll-free number. We'll get to your calls here in just a moment. 855-450-FREE. And there's bounties available right now for you to collect at bitcoinbountyhunter.com. One of them is worth 38 bitcoins. Bitcoin's being worth about 300 something dollars today. That's a lot of money. You can use your investigative skills and collect the bounty. And you can also place your own bounty or even add to the ones that are already there. The authorities aren't going to be solving these cases. It's going to be done by people like you with the skills uh, and the ability to profit from your work. Go check out BitcoinBountyHunter.com as we go to Virgil in Beaver Creek, Ohio. Virgil, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Johnny, Ray, and Mark. Hey guys, how are you tonight? Hey, good, good. What's up? Well, we are uh, we are here at the Beaver Creek Police Department uh, in Beaver Creek, Ohio, and uh, a group of about fifteen or twenty protesters have occupied the uh, large lobby of the of the uh, building, and they are sleeping here. They have sleeping bags and some tents and pillows and food, and uh, basically they are refusing to leave until some action will be taken taken by the police department by the city until the uh, Either the police officer that shot John Crawford in Walmart about a month ago will be fired or prosecuted. So someone shot a guy in Walmart? Yeah, this was the guy that— Yes, yes. 
Yes, so about a month or so ago, uh, a man, uh, a 23-year-old, I believe he was, a young man, was uh, picked up a, a BB gun off a Walmart shelf. Uh, he started walking around with it in the store, and uh, someone called 911, and the police showed up and shot him and killed him. Yeah, wasn't he on the phone or something when they did it? Yes, he was on the phone. He was shot in the back. Uh, the oh, cops wow. gave him uh, less than a second to comply. They yelled out, uh, drop the gun, and then they immediately shot him, basically. So uh, it was. if you watch the video, it was, uh, to me, it was outright murder. Sounds horrifying. I have not seen this video yet. Uh, now, you said you're in the police department, and you're planning on staying there until what? Well, so the police chief, there's a large group of students, actually. It's called the Ohio Student Association. They, uh, they have uh, spearheaded this, uh, which is interesting because some of us from the local uh, cop block chapter are here. Uh, some gun owners have gotten behind this because this is more or less an open carry issue. So it's interesting to see uh, all the dynamics of this protest because it brings back, it brings together people from all kinds of political backgrounds, like liberals and, you know, gun owners and cop block folks. Uh, so we're all kind of united against the same issue, which is basically police brutality. So that's why we're here. The group is making uh, the demand to basically fire the police officer and prosecute him. Uh, the police chief has refused to meet with uh, with us so far. But apparently there are some hints that tomorrow at 1 o'clock, uh, you know, he agreed to meet with some of the some of the group members. And I'm not sure what's, gonna co- what's going to come out of that, but I'll be sure to be here and document it. Um, has the surveillance video been released? The surveillance videos have been released. If you Google uh, John Crawford, the uh, Walmart shooting, you should be able to find the video. It's very clear. Yeah, uh, it is. The 911 caller even even lied about it. The, the caller said that he saw John pointing the rifle or the air rifle at, ki- at children hmm. and so on. But the video is very clear, showing that he's never done anything like that. Some people are even speculating that this is a purely racial-driven driven uh, activity basically it could be because that. John was black. It could be yeah, that. But there's yeah, also absolutely. because the racial issues are never involved when when cops come in the picture, right? <laughs> it could be that or it could be yeah. that uh, there's this movement among uh, people that oppose open carry that uh, we should uh, whenever we see a person with a gun call it in as a man with a gun. Right. And it could very yeah. well be a person who did exactly that. And as far as I'm concerned, if that person claims that uh, he pointed that gun at children, um, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's a crime. Yeah, talk about instigating cops who are already, uh, you know, uh, popped up in adrenaline. I mean, when you when you call 911 and say there's a guy with a gun pointing at, pointing at little kids, that's, that's some serious allegations right there. So I could not agree more. Uh, there's this nationwide group called Moms Demand Action. They are against guns, and they've been actually floating this idea around in some of their forums about calling cops whenever they see someone open carrying. So uh, it's uh, it, it seems to be like murder by cop, more or less. It, I mean, that's as much of a possibility. It's, it's difficult to say what happened. I mean, we just have the video, right. but the video seems to show him as an innocent person. Yep, uh, holding the phone, uh, kind of holding the butt of the gun, holding it into the ground like a cane, and uh, he was shot right there like an animal, ironically, in the pet aisle at Walmart. <laughs> now, there's no charges, correct? The uh, officer who shot this guy, he is scot-free? Uh, yes. Yeah, so a grand jury two weeks ago refused to indict this officer. Uh, they said that he was uh, uh, afraid. I, I don't know what the phrase was. He was afraid for his life, so he was justified in shooting this man. Uh, no charges will be filed, at least not at the state level. Apparently, the feds are now investigating this. Uh, some people are hoping that the federal, the you know, FBI will investigate and the Justice Department will file some charges. I don't. I don't. Not sure about that. I doubt it will happen. But uh, that's the latest. And right now, basically, this group of protesters here. Are refusing to leave. They uh, they're sleeping here until uh, supposedly they say until uh, something will be done. Wow, that's I have to say it's pretty hardcore. Uh, how many cr- protesters are we talking about? Right now there are about twenty people. I'm looking at them here in the lobby, uh, and of, of course it's kind of later at night. But uh, tomorrow will be the big day because the chief uh, will come out and hopefully uh, you know do something about this. I'm not optimistic, but. Tomorrow, we should see a lot more people uh, being here. Also, John Crawford, uh, who was the man that was shot, his mother came here earlier, and she brought some food for all of us. So that was actually pretty emotional. Yeah. Imagine what that's like. And I hope you guys have multiple video cameras on the scene. I think there are probably uh, 20 people here and about 50 video cameras.
<laughs> All right, that's pretty good. Uh, furthermore, there was a there was another death in that Walmart that night. Angela Williams uh, was right. was getting her children out of the store. I guess she had a heart attack or something be, because of the yeah, the what, gunshots. And, what oh, happened? Wow. What happened? She uh, she had a heart condition and she only panicked. The store was actually very calm. Uh, there were no panic in the store until the police showed up and they created panic and they started shooting. At which, at which point Angela took her two children and ran away with them. And then her heart condition kind of you know, mm. caused her to have a heart attack or something along these lines. And she, she passed away in the store. Oh my. If that Angela had been a police officer and if that police officer had a heart attack responding to, say, a uh, convenience store robbery or something like that, could very well right. uh, the robber could very well be uh, you know guilty of murder if the robber lived through Char- charged, <laughs> the encounter. Uh, yeah, charged with manslaughter or something along these lines. I totally agree. Yeah. Have the police threatened you at all, Virgil, or the other protesters for occupying a said department? No threat so far. Uh, I was told that last night around four in the morning they were all asleep here, and uh, one officer came and uh, just kind of stood at the door and turned his radio to the max. The volume and just stood there, uh, just to be basically uh, a jerk, an a hole, yeah. a jerk. And, when did this? Uh, when did this start? So it started last night. Up. This started yesterday morning. Yesterday morning. Okay. It's a, it's a pretty recent occurrence. Uh, I'm here documenting, uh, you know, trying to to shoot some footage, maybe put a short documentary together later on about this, and uh, and just you know document what's happening because this is actually a pretty incredible scene here. I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. Uh, except in Europe when we were, uh, we were kind of on the streets against communism. But this is a fairly new event here. Now, this is the uh, the town of Beaver Creek. Is that right? Beaver Creek, Ohio. And uh, look, if local people want to come here and join us, um, you know, we'll be here. Uh, I, I will be here for the next few hours. I'll is be this back the only department in Beaver Creek? Or are there more than one location? This is the only department. No, okay. there's only one location. You can Google the location if you are in the Dayton or Columbus or Beaver Creek area, come over. You know, we. Uh, I think the more people show up, the better. Yeah, I'm glad you have all those cameras there, Virgil. Beaver Creek, Absolutely. by the way, is a small city of about 45,000 people. How many officers are in the, the department there? I mean, in general. Well, in I'm looking at the panel here. They have it on the wall. I, I would say maybe about 30 officers. About oh, 30, okay. 20 to 30. Wow, that's that's fewer than we have here in uh, in Keene, New Hampshire. Thanks, Virgil. Appreciate the call. Let yep. us know if anything develops, and uh, hopefully it won't. Uh, hopefully no have one gets, a great evening, hopefully guys. No one gets hurt. Thank you for the call tonight. Toll-free number 855-450 free because that same officer is still out there. I don't know if he's still on leave or not, but he hasn't lost his job. He could feel threatened. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Hey guys, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to check out FanDuel.com. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. You only play when you want, and you can change your team any week. FanDuel is paying out over $10 million every week this season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right, for every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. Just go to FanDuel.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code FOOTBALL70. F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com, code FOOTBALL70. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. 
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Now that we actually have access to our phones, we can take your calls. Apologies to anyone who called How in the mortifying. first hour. How uh, mortifying. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, did uh, this happen yesterday? Did we have I any it, calls yesterday? I don't think we did have calls yesterday, and I think it might have been for this reason. Oh, so God. I don't know. So we had some technical difficulties, and that is, I didn't notice that we were on the wrong phone screen. Yeah, software, the wrong. So. Sorry about that, guys. Yeesh. So if I had changed the number four to a number one, or the number one to a number four, then we would have been good. That's the reality of yeah. the situation. So, yeah. And our board off was wondering why we weren't taking the calls, and he was about to say something to us, and I finally figured it out on my own. So, uh, toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. You can also join us on Skype, which I do have logged into the correct account. Skype username is lrn.fm. So, if we did take a call yesterday, I bet you it was a Skype call, if there was a call that we took. Yeah. So, uh, contact us in whichever way works best for you, and join us online at freetalklive.com. The us includes me, Ian. Me, Johnny Ray. And me, Mark. Let's go right back into your calls. Jackson is in California. You're on Free Talk Live. Jackson. Greetings. How are you? Hello. Feeling incompetent. How about you? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I was just I was just doing some pre preliminary research about Columbus Day, and then I found out that the city of Seattle has renamed Columbus Day Indigenous People Day. Well, there you go. Do you think so they still have furniture no store sales? <laughs> You know what? They're going to need bigger signs because you're going you're gonna to have to put more letters on the sign than Columbus Day because Indigenous Peoples Day will require a bigger sign. Yeah. Well, I can't say that I necessarily oppose the decision. I mean, if you're going to have a day, uh, better to be the day for remembering the victims of this slaughtering a-hole uh, Columbus who, you know, they don't tell you in the government schools when you're growing up that apparently he just, you know, was the, the man who uh, murdered uh, countless people when uh, he landed here, <laughs> so you know there is that. I don't. I can't say. Did we read about that? I don't really remember Columbus being much of a killer. Certainly, Hernando de Soto was. Did yeah, you? I'm pretty sure that's the was, rest uh, of the story with Columbus. He was arrested and sent back in chains, I believe. Is that right? I didn't know that part of the story either. Maybe he yeah, himself actually, didn't do the murdering. I imagine it was his crew. Well, I mean, if soldiers. he's captaining, if he's captaining, there's no doubt about it. He 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 brought people back, um, you know, as essentially slaves, but he may have enticed them. I don't know. Jackson? And also, no one knows what, nobody knows what he looks like because every every picture in every textbook, every painting of him that you see, wearing the funny hat, 
that's an artist's rendition. There's no known portrait of him at all. Really? Thanks yeah. for sharing that tonight, Jackson. I appreciate the call. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Eric on the line listening in Grand Forks, Minnesota. You're on Free Talk Live. Eric. Hey, guys. How you doing? Welcome, sir. Um, I, was listening, I was listening to the guy who was uh, talking about that protest at the police station. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just seems to me that I think even libertarians would agree that you know, we're not, we don't say that there shouldn't be police power. Um, but I think what's happened nowadays is that uh, police power has been taken and just like totally concentrated into the hands of just a few elite psychopaths. Okay. Because, I mean, think about it. They carry every conceivable weapon that you can imagine. And you, uh, if you were to get caught with, like, a little knife in your pocket, well, I mean, God help you, you know, that's carrying a concealed weapon. You can't do that. You know, does anyone else see a problem with this? Absolutely. Of course, in a lot of places, uh, or in some places, it's not as illegal to have a knife. I think that here in New Hampshire, I don't want to speak, I don't know the law exactly, but I think that, does concealed uh, carry, that only counts with uh, guns in New Hampshire, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you can have a knife in your pocket. Yeah. So at least around these parts, it's not illegal to have a knife in your pocket. But, but I can tell you going to court, um, if you're dealing, say you've got a speeding ticket or something like that, the police officer who's going to testify against you will be able to carry his gun in. Yeah, and you will not be allowed to have a knife in court. Right. That much is true. He can uh, stand there. He can actually prosecute you in many cases with a uh, gun on his hip, but you won't be able to bring in so much as a pen knife. I mean, a tiny little thing. I'm not really at all convinced. I could be, but I'm not convinced that there should be such a thing as police power. I don't necessarily think that, that we ever need to to have power over another person's body. And I think that we can have – I think the threats to us are really – overblown the perceived threat to us on a daily basis is overblown i agree with that i, I don't i don't fear for anybody ri- f- from there anybody have been killers i mean there have right. been cra- i mean there have been crazed killers who weren't police right yeah Johnny but there's Ryan? not a power right. and, um p- cop block what they say is that that badges don't grant extra rights and this is really important because we all have the rights we have the the, the people in this studio the the caller we all have our rights if we decide to abrogate some of those rights to an organization that is going to protect us, that organization doesn't gain any um, any rights beyond what we're able to uh, what we're able to turn over, essentially, or to license them for. So we don't have the exactly. right to go and uh, shoot a man in the back who happens to have a gun, uh, you know, pointed uh, at the floor. We don't have the right to do that. If that man picks that gun up, turns around, and points it at us. You've got the right to shoot him, but that police officer, that's not what happened. And in this circumstance, that police officer, he he stepped beyond his rights and should be charged. Eric, any other thoughts you want to share? Right. Yeah, if I could just put a finer point on what I meant there, and I agree with you on that, but it's like I'm, uh, what I guess I need is for the government to simply get out of my way and that I can, you know, carry a gun myself. And, you know, I do not need and I do not want cops to protect me. They can't protect me. Heck, most of the time they can't even protect themselves. And so what I need is for them to get the legislature to get out of my way and, and you know, not, not come and prosecute me for taking out some guy who walks into my house in the middle of the night. Yeah, I would like them to see more arresting of the legislature. Thank you for the call tonight, Eric. Appreciate hearing from you. Now, Johnny Ray, when you were saying we don't need to have police power, uh, like I agree that there shouldn't be a monopoly on force, but there's nothing wrong with the idea of having someone pursue a killer, right? Like, let's say there's a serial killer, and there have been serial killers in the past. Uh, so th- there's a serial killer on the loose, and you know we don't have the government police, which I think would be a nice situation because we don't want a monopoly over policing. But there are different uh, insurance companies or protection agencies that have investigators, and they have people, bounty hunters, who are willing to go out and capture somebody. Now, I agree with Mark that just because you suspect someone of being the serial killer doesn't mean you get to ice them. Uh, but at the same time, if you've got evidence that so-and-so is the serial killer— then 
it's a nice thing to have someone who's willing to go and put that guy in a pair of handcuffs, right? And then bring them in front of some sort of an arbitrator for a trial. Isn't there value in that, Johnny Ray? And don't you think people should have that ability to protect themselves? I think what you need, number one, minus absent the police, I think the all of us, all of us in the world, all of us in the U.S., will take steps to protect ourselves. So absent the police, the environment is a lot more dangerous for would-be serial killers. That's true. And number two, once you've identified the serial killer, then that's the most important step you can take for everyone's safety. You don't need to do anything to that person except... Let everybody know who he is, and then let those yeah, people— Yeah, but not everybody's going to know who that person is. Let's be realistic. We live in a large society with hundreds of millions of people around. Most people are paying attention to you know, watching television or sports or something like that. Right. They're not paying attention to what the news is. So, no, everybody's not going to know who those people are. Now, if you're in a small town— you know, I've been in. I remember going to a small town gas station here in New Hampshire, where they had posted up everybody's bad checks that had ever been written. You know, to uh, to that store and like a a picture of that person's ID or whatever information they could have had about that person. And maybe if you're living in the small town, there's a chance you would know who John Smith is, the guy that wrote the bad check. But as soon as John Smith moves over to California, nobody's going to know that he wrote a bad check there. So the same thing with this you know, alleged serial killer. Okay, so you put out the news that there's this serial killer out there. That doesn't mean everyone's paying attention and is going to remember what this person look lo looks like. There's value in having some bounty hunter go and take this guy off the streets, isn't there? Well, I would say that there is a, a, an obscene amount of money spent on criminal justice and locking people up, locking all kinds no of doubt. people up. And if we, if all that money wasn't being wasted on people who present no threat at all, like right. people selling marijuana, people selling heroin, then that money, there would be a market for people that— let me, let me go back. That money could be spent to hire somebody to simply watch— these dangerous people. Let me ask you this: um, I have <laughs> irrefutable. Yeah, yeah. But, but this is this is a point that is brought up by the people who uh, even take a more extreme position on uses of force than we do. This is a pacifist position. And uh, let me ask you this: No, it's not, because he's saying that somebody would shoot this person if uh, if it came down to it. That's no. not pacifism. That uh, well, I'm certainly not advocating that, and I don't think that that people. You're not advocating someone shoot a killer if they're trying to kill them. Oh no, yes, I would advocate. So that's that. not pacifism, but you still have a question mark, right? So hang yep. on, we'll get to that here in moments. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Would like to have you join the show if you've got some comments, even if it's on our first hour where we weren't able to take your calls. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, October 7th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.36 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,208 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $328. Antiwar.com reports former Defense Secretary Leon Panetta was harshly critical of President Obama's handling of the new war against the Islamic State, saying the U.S. could have sustained the 2011 Iraq occupation and started arming Syrian rebels even sooner than they did. But perhaps the most eye-opening comment in his new book tour was that he believes the conflict is a 30-year war that will extend across the world, including campaigns in Nigeria, Somalia, and Libya, among other places. Places. Panetta's new book, entitled Worthy Fights, argues that the Obama administration repeatedly erred by not taking a more hawkish position, including saying that the U.S. should have invaded Syria outright in 2013 instead of making the deal for Syria to scrap its chemical weapons. He went on to argue that the 30-year war he envisions is a chance to repair the damage caused by not launching massive wars in the previous years, calling the lack of wars missed opportunities. Vice President Joe Biden was quick to criticize Panetta, although not on the content of his hawkish comments. Rather, Biden said it was inappropriate for Panetta to criticize Obama at all on anything until after 2016 and that he should at least give the guy a chance to get out of office. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The Associated Press reports the Supreme Court unexpectedly cleared the way Monday for a dramatic expansion of same-sex marriage in the United States and may have signaled that it's only a matter of time before same-sex couples can marry in all 50 states. Rejecting appeals from five states seeking to preserve their bans, the U.S. Supreme Court effectively made such marriage legal in 30 states, up from 19 and the District of Columbia, taking in every region of the country. Challenges are pending in another 20 states. Almost immediately, exuberant couples began receiving marriage licenses previously denied to them. Monday's terse orders from the court were among more than 1,500 rejected appeals that had been piled up over the summer. The outcome was not what either side expected or wanted. Both same-sex marriage supporters and opponents had asked the court to resolve whether the Constitution grants same-sex couples the right to marry nationwide. The justices did not explain why they decided to leave the question unanswered for now. They may be waiting for a federal appeals court to break ranks with other appellate panels and uphold hold state laws defining marriage as between one man and one woman, or they may see little role for themselves as one court after another strikes down state marriage bans. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports pro-democracy demonstrations in Hong Kong rolled into early Tuesday with hundreds of students remaining camped out in the heart of the city after more than a week of rallies and behind-the-scenes talks showing modest signs of progress. 
Student-led protesters early on Monday lifted a blockade of government offices that had been the focal point of their action, initially drawing tens of thousands onto the streets. Civil servants were allowed to pass through the protesters' barricades unimpeded. Over the past week, tens of thousands of protesters have demanded that the city's Beijing-appointed leader quit and that China allow Hong Kong's people the right to vote for a leader of their choice in the 2017 election. A first meeting to pave the way for formal talks between government officials and student representatives was held on Sunday. Another is expected today. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Welcome back to the ONN Presidential Democra Kiosk Debate. If you're just tuning in, tonight... In an historic first, Americans can ask any question at any time just by stepping into one of the thousands of democracy kiosks we've placed in front of 7-Elevens across the country. Decatur, Illinois, let your voice be heard. Hi, everybody. My name is Joe Crawford, and my question is, how many taco and cheese taquitos do you think I can eat in 60 seconds? Kevin, uh, have we screened all of these? We haven't, but we can. We can't. Great. Straight from the heart of America, raw and unfiltered, Rockville, Maryland, to Boulder, Colorado. This is the most powerful sword in the planet. So we really can't screen these things, Kevin? Not at all. Okay, then I think I'll just ask a question of my own. What's that? Okay, no, I won't. Austin, Texas. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Johnny Ray coming up will give us an update on a story that we talked about a while back. I uh, had thought that the baby had died, but apparently it survived having a some sort of flashbang uh, grenade going off next to it during a SWAT raid. They tossed the grenade right in the uh, the crib. Apparently. Now, I'm sure it was an accident. Yeah. But uh, nonetheless, had they not been doing a raid for the insane war on drugs, uh, which I'm just going to guess that's what it was for, then uh, this would probably it, never have happened. It was a warrant, I believe. A warrant. Probably for drugs. <laughs> okay. So we'll get into that. Johnny Ray's got the details. We'll share that with you. But before we get into that, uh, Mark, you had a question for Johnny Ray. We were talking uh, sort of philosophically about, well, what is, what's the ideal situation for policing here in the United States? Because clearly... What we have today is far from the ideal with this monopoly on police, which none of us in the studio agree with. We think that there needs to be drastic change. Ending the war on drugs would be a nice first step. Uh, but Johnny Ray, you went so far as to say that you didn't think that there should be any power that uh, these you know, policing groups should have over your fellow man. Yes, I am not convinced that there needs to be any power to lay hands on anybody or kill somebody. I think that all of us can make changes in our own life that don't radically change our lives for the for the worse i think we can all we can all change our own lives to protect us i think that's fine but you just contradicted something you said earlier or maybe i just misunderstood you you said you don't think there should be any power to lay hands on or kill anybody but at the same time you think people should be able to defend themselves by killing an attacker Yes, I don't think that you should be you should have the power to do those things proactively. You can only do them only at, in defense. Only in immediate immediate okay. defense of an immediate threat to your life. What about somebody else's life? The guy's going to shoot my wife or my child and I decide to shoot him. Uh, yes, you okay, can do great. that. So um, at this point, what uh, Johnny Ray says is that um, the, the, there's uh, different types of force, offensive force, defensive force. A subset of defensive force is retaliatory force. Retaliatory force says that if somebody does something bad to you, you can, do, you can use force to uh, extract some kind of um, recompense or rec uh, yeah, recompense or restitution from that person. So, um, you know, you'd, you'd have to be able to lay hands on that person and, uh, you know, whatever justice it is that uh, is considered societally OK. So you're saying no retaliatory force. And let me ask you this, then. You have said that I may use a gun to defend an immediate threat to my family. What if 
uh, did you recently did you see the to reason? your family or to anyone? Yeah, that, that's fine. Well, when when you start getting to the anyone thing, you start getting farther and farther from knowing what's going on. A guy's holding somebody at gunpoint. I may in, in this world where you're talking about where force is uh, highly limited. I may not know why they're holding a gun on that person, and if I just go ahead and shoot somebody who's holding a gun on somebody, I may very well be getting the victim and not the criminal. Right, because the victim could have turned the tide on the criminal and was holding him at gun. And there, I cap him. Yeah. So uh, I would, I would, That's you know, dangerous. For I sure. would encourage all our would-be uh, gunslingers out there to know what you're getting into when you uh, pull your weapon, um, but. You know my my curiosity is this. Right. So you the saw, classic ex- <laughs> sorry the classic example is the guy. Remember the guy that called the show. It was a, it was a bar fight. Dude stepped into the bar fight and saved this guy from getting his butt kicked. Turns out the guy he kicked saved. To sleep. Turns out the guy he saves was a skinhead Nazi who was the one who had kind of started the the fight in the in the first place. So he didn't really know what he was getting into. Sorry, Mark. Go ahead with your question. So, um, did you see the new Marvel movie, Guardians of the Galaxy? No, I didn't. Okay, Drax the Destroyer's family's been killed by uh, Ronan, um, who is a rogue uh, Kree warlord. Mm-hmm. And uh, Drax is hell-bent upon uh, exacting vengeance for the death of his uh, wife and children. Uh, great character, well-acted. Um, I just, I think it's, he's fantastic. But, you know... Does is Drax in the right or in the wrong for attempting to, you know, get justice for the killing, the the brutal killing of his family? He's in the wrong. He's in the wrong. You just you just gotta suck it up and take it. Um, you know that this this killer's killed your wife and your child, the the only people you really love um, on on the planet. You just gotta suck it up. You just have to wait around until the killer comes back to get you, and then you can get him. Or uh, you know, just keep a good eye on him. Yeah, you can keep a good eye on him. Killing killing him is doesn't do anything for the people that he has killed. It doesn't. It only it satisfies your sense of personal honor. But what about well, getting restitution? How many people how many You're people You're not being restituted by killing somebody. I didn't say else. kill him. And you uh, well you were bringing up this movie, but I don't think it was to ask the question well, about killing. Well, I mean th- there's, you know, there's some uh, certainly some other questions. Can I uh, put my, lay my hands on him and uh, put him into forced labor and chains in order to uh, you know, produce some kind of good or service that I can then sell and uh, you know, make good with whatever monetary uh, you know, m- monetary recompense I can get out of him. No, you can't do that okay, either. Great. So it doesn't really matter. Um uh, you know, I can I can't lock him up to keep him from killing other people. No, you can't do. How that. many people can he? Um, at at what point? So he's killed a hundred people. Um, I my my <laughs> wife and kid were seventy three and seventy four. Um, he has shown a pattern. Can I still not grab him and lock him up and prevent him from killing more people? No, you cannot. Okay, um, so I have to catch him in the act. This is really a very I mean, I've heard this position before, but do you understand how nuts it sounds, right? Uh, I can sort of understand why you might think it sounds nuts. It doesn't sound nuts to me. It does sound very different. sounds very radical. It's radical. But I think Your solution was to have somebody follow this guy around? Yes. Yes, because— 24 hours a day? Yeah, or a team of people. It sounds very expensive. I think it's less expensive than than what we're doing now. I would agree with that. So what, I, oh, I'm not supporting what we're doing now, and I don't think anyone on this show is supporting what, and I'm not doing it, but what the government guys are doing now to supposedly protect people. What what I would propose as the reasonable uh, e- example of what should be done in these situations, first of all, I don't want to see a monopoly on protection. I want to see com- competition available in this area. And that means that these agencies or individuals who would be providing protection services would be fully liable for their actions. Today, we have no liability. Uh, the, these people, like you're going to share with us here about the story about the, the infant who had his face burned away to some extent, dis- horribly disfigured by the SWAT team in this incident. They're not going to be held liable for this. But in the, uh, the, the vision that I would like to share, these people would be personally liable for everything they do which means you can't just go and find somebody to arrest for some sort of a crime which we've seen the police do plenty of times today they just got to have a body they've got to find someone to they so they can show the people that they're actually protecting them it doesn't matter as long as he's a black guy then okay good enough so the idea would be that if there's this murderer we're talking about this killer who's out murdering people and you've got evidence that this is the guy and you're certain that it's him, then you're fully within your rights to take that person, it's a kidnapping, to kidnap that person and put them on trial 
for their acts. If it turns out your evidence was incorrect, you botched up the job, you misinvestigated or something like that, and you got the wrong guy, well, then you're fully liable for a kidnapping, and you'll have to be the one who pays the price of restitution to the person you kidnapped in that case. But if you did get the right person, then you've taken a bad guy off of the streets, and then you know what to do with them later on is another question to ask. Well, that's what your idea of this is. And what Johnny Ray um, probably, you know, at this point hasn't mentioned, but is really sort of important to this, is that everyone would know that this is a bad guy, right? It would be on but his politic, his uh, his credit report or whatever um, the free market version of a credit report is. People can choose not to do business with this uh, serial killer who's now killed a hundred people. Um, they can make it very uncomfortable uh, for him for not by not selling him cupcakes and things like that that he might really want uh, while he's busy not killing people's family. Okay, so I've got another one for you, Johnny Ray. We'll we'll see just how far this crazy hole goes. Um, somebody has stolen my car. They have it in their garage. Mm. Their garage has glass windows. Some of them, you know, some garage had glass windows. I can see my car, including my bumper stickers, which are really obvious. Like, there's the bumper sticker that can, says— I'm sorry. Can you start over? I was thinking about Drax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's stolen my car. They've taken my car. They put it in their garage. Uh, the garage has glass windows. I can see my bumper stickers. I can clearly see— It's the, your car, no I doubt. Sl- see, clearly see the bumper sticker that says, Barack Obama's fired more cruise missiles than all the Peace Prize winners combined. Mm-hmm. Can I break into their garage and aggress upon their structure? Because the garage is locked— um, I have to, you know, pry it open or something like that in order to get my property out of their garage. Yes. Now, why is it that I can aggress upon their property, but I can't aggress upon their person? Before you answer that question, uh, we'll come back with more in moments. 855 450 free. Share your thoughts. Ever wonder why so many politicians violate the U.S. Constitution? Maybe they simply don't understand its principles. Fiat empire, original intent, cultural Marxism, corporate fascism, and Molan Labe explore these issues. Featuring experts like Ron Paul, G. Edward Griffin, Edwin Vieira, Pat Buchanan, John McManus, Larry Pratt, this 12-hour 8-DVD set is available only at moviepubs.net. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, October 6, 2014, gold opened at 1196.20. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1240.33, 620.16 for a half ounce, or 310.08 for a quarter ounce. That's 1240.33, 620.16, and 310.08. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Why does a U.S. orthodontist make more than some CEOs? You get that dental bill and you'll know. Implants, partial or full bridge, the kids need braces? Fractions of U.S. prices. Balloon angioplasty for heart patients in the U.S. is $50,000. Thailand, under $7,000. Heart bypass, joint and hip replacement, cancer, many procedures under the price of your Obamacare deductible and copay. Don't risk bankruptcy. Hit us up now. We'll show you how at asiarunlikehellguide.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online, freetalklive.com. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show. Our username is lrn.fm. And is privacy dead? Well, not if you have anything to say about it. On November 7th and 8th, coders, privacy specialists, and idea people of all stripes will join together for Hack the Trackers, a transparency and privacy hackathon brought to you by Ghostery. You can enter online or join us in person in New York City to create tools that make the web, and I think by us they mean hack the trackers, because I didn't know that we were going to be there. Is there a plan for Free Talk Live to be I, there? I don't believe there is. Okay, so a uh, person in New York City to create tools that make the web a more transparent place or help users manage how much data they share. The hacks will be judged by experts and voted on by an online community, and winners will receive a prize package, including the all-new Black Phone, a secure-by-design smartphone for people who recognize a need for privacy and want a simple, secure place to start. Participation is free, and registration is open now. Visit hackthetrackers.com for more information. That's hackthetrackers.com. So we continue here discussing justice in a future society that does not exist. At least one uh, envisioned by Johnny Ray, as Mark is sort of picking Johnny's brain on this issue of, you know, how should things work? Johnny, you essentially, and correct me if I'm wrong, have said that you don't believe that there's any need whatsoever for any law enforcement or police or security agents or bounty hunters or whoever you might want to hire to protect you from supposed bad guys. That there's no reason whatsoever for them to put any hands on anybody ever. That uh, that the only time you have the ability, according to you, Johnny Ray, to to kill someone who may have killed another person is when they are directly threatening you or a, perhaps a loved one. Mm-hmm. Am I right so far with with what you've said? Yeah, I would still extend I would still extend the that loved one to be anyone. To be anyone. So but- defensive force is OK. In the moment, um, either uh, personal or um, you know, sort of uh, you know, for as a license. I mean, so I can have, I can, uh, you know, somebody else can protect me as well as me. And then you uh, asked a question about, okay, well, let's cut all the people out of this and let's go with a theft question. Right. So property. So if this is true in murder, it's going to be true um, for everything else. So I mean, if there's if there's somebody coming into my house to burglarize my house, but they don't have a, a, a gun. Can I use deadly force upon them? No. Okay, no. I just, what do I do? I, like, punch them? To protect your property? Um, I don't know. I guess I'd have to think about that a little bit. But but, do but I, punching them, you get it, putting yourself in between them and your property is what you do. And if they try and go through you, then you you give them that, that neck snap like you see in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really difficult thing to uh, to put in play. I wonder if it's. Uh, I wonder in how many cases in uh, in, in human history that, that thing has actually worked. <laughs> um, okay, so w- what you said is is that I can if they steal my car, I can go to their garage and I can break into the garage and get my car. Right. Right. Now you know that. When I break into their garage, I'm going to break things like the lock or the window or the door. Or something's mm-hmm. going to get broken, so they're going to be, they're going to lose something while I'm getting my property back, right? Right. You'll be destroying some of their property to get your property back. 
Now, can I maliciously, like, you know, when I go in the garage, knock a bunch of things off their counter or whatever and break them? <laughs> that is for the free market courts to decide. Well, it, the free market courts may or may not agree with you on this. I'm talking to, about you, the arbiter in this free market court. Okay. You have a you have a system. You have a you're, you're proposing a system. I would and, say no. You could not do that. In I, order to in order to be an honorable man, Mark, you must try and mitigate damage to their property while. Attempting to recover your I, I believe I'm completely honorable by uh, throwing a Molotov cocktail in that garage as I leave, frankly. Burn that some bitch no, to the ground. That is See, not that's, honorable, and, and I'm going to be with Johnny Ray on this this part of it. That's that's your Achilles heel. You you believe that revenge has got there's some value to it, and there's not. Well, I do no, think that, that just continues the cycle of violence. And if you want to repossess a product that has been taken from you, and that person will not simply allow you to have it back, then it is your responsibility to only destroy and break into what was necessary to get to and get the product out safely. Well, this is what I need. I need arbitrators like you guys really second-guessing the way I broke in, too. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't have to take a, a skill saw to the wall. <laughs> you could have broken out a window. My God, what's wrong? You animal! You know, you know. I, I'm sorry. I've, I've got to say that if this guy's uh, unattached garage, I'm not talking about an attached garage right like burning down this whole house because there may you be people kill in his it. family if you do that that would not be my intention so okay so we're we've got the uh, the situation with the uh, robber uh, i can i can get my car back from them um what happens if they um they, they've taken the car and they've sold it Mm. Now, can I go to their house and That's get tricky. a bunch of things from them that equal the value, the replacement value of the car? Now, the only thing that you can that you have power over is your own property. So if they sell your but car— But they sold my property. Right, they sold your and property. And they got money from it. And they exchanged it for money, but you can't—the you, you, money is not yours. Okay. Only the car is yours. So I can't even get the money from them. A free market court might might award you the money for it. Well, would I have to get the specific bills? But the with free like market the court does serial not numbers on them have the power to compel to compel them with but force a free to pay you. Right. Well, the free market court that you're talking about doesn't have the power to compel somebody with force. Can't even get this person to show up to testify in their own defense. Right. Like, why would they? Why would they give a darn? They've got my car in a garage, and there's nothing I can do about it. Um, some people, by the way, who take your position would say that I can't do anything to the garage. That's why I've I- I've uh, heard someone make that I've asked, claim. right, that uh, the question, that I can't break anything in order to get the car back because that stuff doesn't belong to me. Now, you've said that I can't break, like, you know, I, I must take the shortest route through the garage <laughs> in order to get the car because I can't break, break extra stuff. So, I mean, you're, you're still giving, you're still tying my hands pretty badly here. Well, the goal is to recover your property, and that's- that's you want to do that, and that's it. That's all you. That's all you're entitled to do is recover your own property. So you do know that some people don't steal all the time, right? Like there are people that just don't like me or Ian, especially when we're on the radio. Um, you know, they just don't. They dislike our opinions. So they may not be people that live a life of thievery. They may just be people that like to. You know, that, the, the, you know, we'll use force now and then once every few years in order to sort of get somebody. Now, that person's going to essentially be able to get away with it because they'll be able to to, you know, make bargains with locals that say, hey, look, you know, you don't like those people. I'm just trying to get a little uh, vigilante justice against them. I think you're really setting up a, a Hatfields McCoy's uh, situation here where you're not going to see a free market injustice. The fact is. The libertarian thought generally says that a person who has uh, aggressed against you, you can use force to get what you want out of that person. Generally does, which is why Johnny Ray seems to be taking a, a much more, I don't know what you call this stance, but it is, it's not its not necessarily an anti-violence stance. I don't know, is there a name for it, Johnny Ray, whatever it is you're doing, this particular perspective? No, not that I know of, All right, but well, it's, it's, it's uh, I know private property. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ian. No, no, I want to bring Brian on here. We can continue the nuances of this in a moment. But Brian's in Montana, and you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead, real quick. Brian's apparently on hold or something. I don't know what happened there. Let's see if we can get him back. Brian, uh, call us back. Noise. I'm not sure what that was. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. If you'd like to comment on Johnny Ray's system of justice. Make me understand this, because Johnny Ray's no fool. 
I, I just don't understand. Well, just because he's not a fool doesn't mean he's not wrong on yeah, this yeah, one as yeah. well. Uh, more on the way. 855-450 free. You take control. Free Talk Live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you going to display? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't going to make it. Wait, 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 wait. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at Facebook.LRN.FM. That's Facebook.LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free. Bring up anything you want. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com 
and do enjoy the features we share with you. If you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support the show, please become an amplifier. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. It's 5 bucks a month, and you can do it with any major credit card through PayPal or use Visa or MasterCard right on our website. And that 5 bucks will take in and invest into Free Talk Live, using it to get on more radio stations around the country. We've got over 160 stations so far. We could have 300, 400, 5. Six is tough to get, but we could probably definitely get uh, 500 uh, stations. But it takes time and it takes money, and that's what the AMP program is about. It's not just about getting radio stations, though. It's also about advertising on the Internet and bringing new Internet listeners on board, as well as expanding our satellite coverage around the world. These are all things that we can do with your 5 bucks a month. So go to amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Makes a big difference for us when you do this. And you get perks, too, like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only uh, podcast, as well as the newish AMP only Facebook group, which has been a lot of fun. And uh, I think that's one of the, the biggest reasons these days to AMP is to be able to really connect with the other people who are also supporters of the show. So very cool. AMP.freetalklive.com. Uh, Johnny Ray, Mark, myself here in the studio tonight talking about free market justice, or at least some of our vision for what that could look like. And as you can tell, the three people behind the microphones on this program tonight do not all agree on what it would end up looking like. But we do know, I think this we can agree on, that today's system is awful and inhumane and needs to be changed dramatically. And I think that there are some things that could be done within the system today to immediately improve it, like ending the war on drugs would be a good one. And let's also, while we're at it, end the war on prostitution and the war on uh, gambling. Let's get rid of the, the vice so-called crimes and any other crime that doesn't have a victim. And if you only have the government police focus on really going after criminals who've hurt other people, then I think that would be a major shift and a major change in how the police treat people who are not actually you know, wanted thugs. But beyond that, Johnny Ray, you're talking about a world where not only would the government police not exist, but there would be no private uh, protection agencies either, at least not in the way that the, they wouldn't work in the way that the government police do, that they, you're saying they wouldn't be able to kidnap somebody uh, to force them to come to some sort of arbitration or some form of a free market court. You're saying that only would they be able to be monitored only would the these what, what if there were a protection agency that they would only be able to inform people about this person or be there in case they did happen to attack somebody else am i miss miss misspeaking or misstating your position no that's a good description of it also i had a picture painted for me by Stefan Molyneux several years ago hmm. where he was talking about, I forget, I forget what they're called now, but um, but these sort of insurance type companies that would replace government as we know it. And I think it's absolutely plausible that you could have a community, uh, you could self-select a community for yourself where it was possible to starve someone out by in a consensual voluntary manner if someone came into your community and was a criminal of any kind then then the and the information was out about him then people would voluntarily not do any business with him whatsoever so the idea would be and i've heard this idea before and i don't think it's a bad one uh like that this person would be an outlaw right so if this person has been accused of murder and there's evidence out there that this person has committed murder or that they're a, a robber or something like that then they are considered an outlaw and there's some sort of system that would track that, which would mean that everybody in that town would have to ostracize have some. They would have to have if it was a fairly large town, they wouldn't be able to just identify the person by sight. You'd have to have some other kind of identification system. You'd have to have an RFID chip or some sort of tag that yeah, everybody you know, would, could could have something. It doesn't have to be as invasive as an RFID chip. Yeah, I guess it would be better the more well, that it was harder it. to counterfeit. You could carry it on you, I suppose. But yeah, I see what you're saying there. But then, you know, if you were to walk into a grocery store, some sort of an alarm would go off to indicate that an unwanted person, this outlaw character, was in the store and that you would be able to identify who that person was. I believe that technology could provide some sort of a system like this. Not globally. Not anytime Not globally. soon. No, but you don't have to have have that you just have to have it for you and your like-minded pals it might work on iceland or something like that Yeah, but that. then what do you how do you deal with somebody who's coming into town who is not part of this system but is also not an outlaw in the system 
You know, that's, there's a lot of big questions to deal with here. No visiting the town. <laughs> it's only for like-minded people. It gets very Get compl- out. It gets it's only very for jo- Johnnyites only. Let's go to Alma. She's in Georgia. Uh, you're on Free Talk Live, Alma. Well, you know we live in the wild, wild west. It's America's crazy place anyway. But you you don't steal from me. You steal from me, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> I have never stole anything in my life. I've worked for everything. If you steal from me, I am going to hurt you. You're a monster, you Alma. My no, she's family. not. <laughs> you kill my family. You better hope I can't find you. You better hide good. That is the <laughs> attitude we're dealing with, uh, Johnny Ray. And I've, I've got to say that I, I have a certain um, sympathy for Alma's position. Yeah, I don't think she's doing anything wrong there. I mean, I, to, I don't I don't blame her for feeling that way. I as think... long as they lock them up where I can't get to them. But if I can get to them, Lord help them. Yeah, wouldn't that prevent more violence if you've got the, and thank you for the call, Alma, wouldn't that, uh, you know, if, if Alma's family was murdered by some killer and she's ready to go out and kill that person back, uh, and of course that would violate that would violate your tenets. You said that the person who had done the killing cannot be killed by someone else unless the, unless it's in the incident, unless it's in the actual happening of the initial killing. That the, the defensive killing can't happen except within that parameter. So therefore, Alma would be violating your rules. So she's about ready to go out and kill this guy. Wouldn't it prevent more violence for some protection agency to come in and say, "Whoops"? We're going to arrest this guy. We got enough evidence to convict him of murder and send him away to where he can actually work to restitute the victims, to restitute Alma, send her checks, rather than giving her the satisfaction of being able to commit the uh, this very same act back. Wouldn't that actually prevent violence? I think the threat, the, the, the threat of vigilantism in the mind of a would-be perpetrator would reduce crime. But I'm not going to, and I wouldn't shed a tear for for Alma's victims if they were guilty. But I also wouldn't wouldn't advocate what she's doing. I wouldn't support her going out and taking revenge on someone who had stolen from her. But at the same time, I think, I think revenge is a vestigial emotion that has that is that is with us from from the days of of. Are being animals in the wild, but, but at the I same agree time. with you um, that you know revenge is not the you know, not the greatest emotion. But hold on, Johnny Ray. So now we've got Alma going back out to kill the killer, right? That's what she's doing. Now we're in this scenario here. She's going out. She's her family's been well, killed. Well, she was talking about people who stole from her, but we can say we right. can we can upgrade it. I thought she it. said something about killing, but anyway, so she's going out. Well, to- I think the suggestion is if they're in her house, that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't. I didn't. That wasn't clear. It sounded to me like you better hide. She said you better hide, and you better hide good. I don't think she just meant in your house. It sounded to me like she was going to come out and kill you wherever you are. Yeah, she said you killed her family. So she's now coming after the killer. You happen to be on the street where she confronts this killer, and she's about to kill the killer. Are that you going to come to his defense? That I that I am legally bound by the tenets of Johnnyism to shoot Alma. Ah, uh, see, your system is creating more violence, Johnny Ray. Isn't the ideal to not have violence is to eliminate as much violence as we can possibly eliminate from society yeah if you if you want a lack of violence you're going to need justice and i don't think what you're talking about is justice i think that i'm being pragmatic and i think that all of the goals of of the goals that would be served by locking somebody up or by by executing somebody after they have committed their crime i think all those goals can be achieved without ever laying hands on someone and i don't think everybody has to get on board with this plan i think it's a great plan and i think that people would i think the majority of people would choose to get on my plan but you don't have to have everybody part of it for it to succeed Okay, you, you talked about practicality, and I have to kind of question the practical aspect of this. We might just be able to do that here in moments, but we'll also take your calls. In the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, which are coming up shortly, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's toll-free, brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. You can also join us via Skype at username LRN.FM. We're coming up. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. 
Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Beautiful Bellwood flooring just got even better with twice the scratch resistance and four times the abrasion resistance of other brands. And right now, Lumber Liquidators has exclusive deals on Bellwood with savings up to 40%. Choose from over 140 varieties, including Brazilian cherry, American walnut, even Bellwood's hot new matte finish that gives you that oil finished look without all the maintenance, all with a transferable 100-year warranty. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest to you. First ever 36-month financing is available, but hurry, these amazing deals end Tuesday. Summertime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Are you about to meet the media? If you're about to be interviewed, do their homework for them. Know this about the person who will interview you. He or she is busy, so expect minimal, if any, preparation. He or she doesn't know as much about your topic as you do. He or she isn't as concerned as you are about getting your message out, so you need to take responsibility. Provide a biography and fact sheet, photographs, or other materials that tell your story. Story. Reporters won't be put off if you supply frequently asked questions. Remember, Public Speaking 101, at the end of the speech, what's the one thing you want them to remember? You can download the document I supply to reporters who interview me and squirm through a video that demonstrates how not to conduct your media interview at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel it any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. You can also connect with us on Skype. Skype username, lrn.fm. Send a contact request. It'll be approved. And it'll be easy for you to call from that point forward and talk about whatever's on your mind with you in the studio. Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Mark. Don't forget, you can join us coming up at Keenvention. Uh, that's happening October 31st through November 2nd. It is the second annual Keenvention, and it's on track to be about, I would say, the same size, maybe slightly larger than last year's Keenvention. And last year's was an intimate event, uh, probably about 100-some people, 115 or so, showing up over the weekend. And at any moment, there were anywhere from 40 to 60 people actually in the convention hall area, which means you get to meet pretty much everybody that's there. You get to, uh, to meet these activists that you've heard about so often here on Free Talk Live. As we've discussed, the Free State Project, the idea of moving liberty oriented people to New Hampshire to get active to achieve more freedom in our lifetime. What are those activists 
doing. Well, sometimes we talk about those things here on Free Talk Live, but at Keenvention, that's all we'll be talking about uh, throughout the entire weekend. We'll be focusing on different styles and forms of activism uh, and talking to various different activists. We probably will have at least three or four dozen of uh, some of the bigger named activists in the New Hampshire area uh, be speaking there. We've got panel discussions and uh, keynote speeches looking forward to it and it's coming together so go to keenvention.info not too late to get your tickets for just $60 or the Bitcoin equivalent of $60 you can do that over at keenvention.info you can watch videos from last year including Johnny Ray with his panel last year the old school movers panel Uh, so you can check that out plus Mark you were on a panel last year the news media panel which you will now be hosting the media panel this year tis true Uh, so kind of changing things up a little bit here and there adding some new panels in and uh, adding a couple of exciting events, including the premiere of the 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, the documentary film that uh, will be having its theatrical premiere during Keenvention. So all of that happening and more. Come on up. It's going to be a good time. Keenvention.info. Go get your tickets. uh, Reserve your hotel rooms. They're cheap. Ian, when I think of Keenvention, I think of the diffuse, soft glow of a hotel room's Chandelier, sorry, not a hotel, yeah. but a hotel the convention room, room yeah. sh- a chandelier. I think of the smell of pumpkin spice. I think of sweaters. I think of Bill Domenico, one of the warmest things in the world. <laughs> and I think of bright orange lanyards. Yes, the lanyards uh, will be returning this year, but I t- uh, picked a different material. So last year was like a shoelace style material. This year we're going with nylon, and we'll see how that works out. Uh, so it's a little bit different. Actually, they're a little more expensive. So spend a little bit of extra cash on that. Keenvention.info. Come on out and uh, enjoy it. There's also out stuff outside of the hotel that happens. Like you can go cop blocking uh, with uh, folks from Keen Cop Block. You can also hit the streets and do some Robin Hooding. Last year, the city actually shut down the parking enforcement for both the Friday and the Saturday during Keenvention because they knew Keenvention was coming to town. And they didn't want to deal with uh, you know a half a dozen people out at one one time doing, uh, doing Robin Hooding, saving people from getting parking tickets. So the question is, will they shut down the parking enforcement again this year uh, in celebration of Keenvention or in, in honor or, if, or fear uh, of Keenvention, whatever their reasoning. So we'll find out and let you know as time goes on. Keenvention.info. Let's go to Thomas in West Virginia listening to WVTS. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Hey. How you guys doing tonight? Good. You're on the air. Go ahead. All right. I wanted to touch up on uh, the subject of the victimless crimes and also ending the war on drugs. Sure. Uh, yeah. Um, in the United States today, we have more people in prison than probably any other country in the world, I would say. I think that's true. Uh, and and a huge percentage and of per them capita, are, the U.S. imprisons more people per capita than any other country in the world. Yeah. Right. But but we're the freest country but, in the but, world too. But, yeah, yeah. We're supposed to be the freest country in the world. But uh, most most of them are just uh, self drug addicts, and or you know got caught with a little bit of weed or something like that. Yep, or drug dealers. And, yep, like, or yeah, drug dealers, victimless crimes, and like you said, that they didn't kill anybody, but they're in prison with murderers, rapists, and child molesters. You know the sickos, and um, what what. The government, I think, needs to do is realize that the war on drugs is a waste of taxpayers' money, and they need to put the drug addicts and the drug dealers in the rehabilitation uh, centers and try to get them help. I don't even think they should do that, and here's why. Um, If you force someone into rehab, it's just not worth anyone's while because you're wasting the drug addict's time because they're not ready for it. If you don't choose rehab for yourself, so you're wasting the addict's time and you're also wasting the clinic's time as well. Now, in in the case of uh, forced rehab, the clinic usually doesn't really care because they're getting, you know, they're getting a check guaranteed to them. But ultimately, you are wasting all of those people's time. And uh, and I think that if just let's leave the drug addicts alone as far as the system is concerned. Concerned and leave it in the hands of the people who love them and care for them, whether they be family members, neighbors, friends, or co-workers. Let the people who are connected to those people help try to offer those people help. But, you know, even then, they shouldn't be able to force someone into treatment, I don't think. I, actually, uh, you brought up a good point, and I 
that brought some that turned on a light bulb in my head. There you uh, go, Thomas. I thank you for the call uh, tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. It feels like more compassion to say, well, let's put them in treatment instead. But as long as your solution is let's force them into treatment, it's not a compassionate solution. You may be able to argue that it's slightly better than putting someone in jail, but it's not that much better than putting someone in jail. Well, I think that uh, when you're talking about this issue, what's very uh, what's obvious is that you can look at places around the world, Portugal, Amsterdam, um, you can see that drug decriminalization works. Um, well, that, that may not be obvious, but it's true. Okay. Well, yeah. um, you know, anybody who spends any kind of time with this uh, right. is going to come to the conclusion that drug dr- decriminalization works. Research Portugal, the, uh, the results have been amazing after uh, over a decade now. What we haven't seen is whether drug legalization works, whether or not uh, just making, you know, heroin and crack available in drug stores where it would be clean uh, and safer. Cheap. And, but, you know, we don't know whether that would work. But here's the question. The thing that worries me the most about it is, is when you make something like that available, you need to, the next step is advertising, right? Like if I'm a, you know, you've got some drug company producing good, clean heroin and good, clean crack and good, clean crank. What is that? What is crank? Speed? Method? Method? I don't know. Anyway. Methamphetamines? Yeah, that stuff. What, what, they're good, clean products. Then, you know, advertising is advertising for a reason. There's a reason that there are commercial breaks on Free Talk Live is because those commercial breaks work. Um, you know, so are Plus they- sometimes go- you have to pee. Yeah, well, there's that too. Within talk show hosts need breaks. Um, so, you know, what will the world? What will that world look like where they can advertise? Come get your crank. Well, um, it'll only look like uh, that if the companies who are allowing the advertising will uh, will accept it. I mean, there why be wouldn't many they? Places, well, How because many companies? There are many should, places look, where the cost- alcohol is a very damaging drug. We all know it, and mm-hmm. all you have to do is take a look. And every major ad venue out there is willing to take beer advertisements and liquor okay. advertisements. They may not be willing to take crack ads not maybe not maybe not the first week Hmm. okay i think what would be more popular in this uh in this free realm is something that's not quite as potent as methamphetamines or methamphetamines as they as they currently are um i think we might have some some energy drinks that you know that have got a little bit of meth in there and uh, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I, as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather have all of that than forcing people who would make these choices to go to a prison cell or fo- uh, forcing them uh, I don't think that that's, into rehab. I don't think those are the only choices, Ian. That's the point I'm trying to make here is, is that there's cre- decriminalization in many countries. Mm-hmm. That decriminalization is working. We know that it's working. Um, we can look at uh, the evidence and that they're— You're arguing against legalization? I'm asking a question. Okay. And, like, you don't have the answers. I don't but, care what the answer is. As I, long I, as I know. Not, that's as really as we're not where— putting the, people in prison cells, That's, that's where the hard-line libertarian position comes is I don't really care. Yeah, you I'm not going to do crank. Deal with it and come up with creative solutions to educate people on why crack smoking is a bad thing. That's what works. It's not about, uh, yeah, I mean, so it's going to be, the the company that sells crack is going to be much more economically incentivized to uh, advertise crack than I am to get together with some friends and say, hey, you know what we should do? You know what the most important thing we can do with our money right now is advertise that people shouldn't do crack. That's a, Mm -hmm. you know, like there's a different, there's a different set of incentives there. I get no money from people not doing crack, but I'm going to spend my money. I know it's It's not. It's not my problem. Look, if you care about this issue, Mark, then you'll spend time and money on it. If you don't care, then shut up because you don't care. Well, maybe. maybe. Johnny Ray's game of the week. What is it this week? It's the same one as last week. Yes, Rise of Nations. I still have not cracked the shell of this thing because I'm. You're getting your butt kicked. Yes, I am. Another I've been... game that uh, people are getting their butt kicked on is Alien Isolation. I'm interested in playing that one, where you're uh, on this spaceship and the alien from the classic iconic movies that people might have seen is after you, and you really can't do anything to kill it, so you have to uh, just try to survive. Which there was a good? study about involving Rise of Nations that supposedly increased people's working memory competency, and my working memory sucks. We'll come back with more tomorrow night. See you then. FreeTalkLive.com. Do you try- Free Talk Live. Sometimes you have to do things in emergencies that you don't do in normal times. Like lock up um, Japanese Americans? Look, you don't believe in the internment of the Japanese Americans? Yes, the hell I don't. I don't believe in locking somebody up something. for not doing Let anything wrong. Let me tell you wrong. something. There were Japanese Americans 
who assisted Japanese soldiers in the Hawaiian Islands at that time. So grab all the families and throw them in a concentration camp. That's a great solution, Lou. That's something that should happen in the land of the free, right? I don't even like you using the term concentration camp. That's what they were, Lou. Because they were not death camps. They were, they were, it doesn't they matter were, if there weren't gas chambers on they the were not premises. Death camps. You see, you're using euphemism. I call them a concentration camp. You're concentrating people all in one location, Lou. I don't, you know, you're giving it an implication that it does not have. <laughs> I think you should go to the uh, Japanese Americans and ask them, Lou. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, October 7, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,196, silver around $17.03, and Bitcoin is trading around $334. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news today, On Monday, the Supreme Court decided not to rule on several lower court rulings involving same-sex marriage, effectively legalizing the marriages in 11 states. The decision will go into effect immediately in five states, including Virginia, Indiana, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, and Utah. In the other six states, the attorney generals will either make the practice legal or pursue the issue further in court. With the decision, same-sex marriages are now legal in 30 states. An American video journalist who contracted Ebola while working in Liberia stepped off a jet Monday under his own power on his way to a Nebraska hospital where he will be treated for the disease in a specialized containment unit. At the bottom of the jet steps, 33-year-old Ashoka Mukpo was loaded onto a stretcher for the ambulance ride to the Nebraska Medical Center. Mukpo was working as a freelance cameraman for NBC News when he became ill last week. He's the fifth American with Ebola to return to the U.S. for treatment during the latest outbreak. Over the weekend, activists performed a flash mob song in protest at the St. Louis Symphony in honor of slain Ferguson teenager Michael Brown. The St. Louis Dispatch reports the symphony musicians were preparing to play when two members of the audience stood up and sang, Which Side Are You On? Other protesters stood up and joined in while dropping banners over the balconies. One of the banners read, Racism Lives Here. Activists have continued to call for the indictment and arrest of Officer Darren Wilson. Large protests and civil disobedience are expected this coming weekend. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries. Homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated. Helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is The Liberty Beat for Tuesday, October 7th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. New documents obtained by Judicial Watch confirm the deceased al-Qaeda leader Anwar al-Awlaki worked with the FBI following the 9-11 attacks. 
Judicial Watch has obtained over 900 pages of documents that detail emails and voicemails between al and an FBI agent in 2003. The news marks the second time the cleric was tied to the U.S. government. In 2010, it was reported that he dined at the White House in the days following September 11th as part of an informal outreach program. The documents confirm suspicions that al was likely an asset of the U.S. government. The Veterans Affairs Department said it's firing four senior executives as officials move to crack down on wrongdoing following a nationwide scandal over long wait times for veterans seeking medical care and falsified records covering up the delays. The dismissals are the first since Congress passed a law this summer, making it easier for veterans who experience delays to get care outside VA's nationwide network of hospitals and clinics. The law also made it easier for the agency to fire senior officials suspected of wrongdoing, shortening their appeals process to 28 days. A member of the Filipino House of Representatives has introduced legislation that would mandate the creation of an El Peso and research of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. If passed, the Filipino Central Bank would study the technology of Bitcoin and post-Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. It's not yet known how the El Peso would be implemented or if it would coexist with Bitcoin. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at TheConsciousResistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, October 7, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. The entire nation has been transfixed by the emotional saga of missing toddler Aaron Crawford. Police remain baffled by four-year-old Aaron's mysterious disappearance. The Crawford family is finally speaking out, but it isn't easy. We're taking it day by day, you know? We just miss our baby so much. This must be so hard on everyone. Oh, he does cry. I hate him. Little Aaron was last seen in the bedroom he shares with his older brother, Denny. Authorities say he was abducted by an intruder in the middle of the night. Denny was in the room when Aaron was taken. Yeah, right here. Now it's just my room. Denny, can you tell us what happened? I was in my room. The man lifted up the window and came in. Were you scared? Yes, because I thought he's going to take my Xbox. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome to Peace News. You're listening live. It's Tuesday, October 7th, 2014. It's 10 p.m. here on the East Coast. I'm in Keene in the Shire. You can learn more about Keene at freekeene.com. You can learn more about what I'm doing here in the Shire, New Hampshire, at freestateproject.org, or my website, derekj.me. You can interact with me and some of the other listeners of our show by tweeting at Derek J M E or dialing in 443-424-8347 gets you on the air. You can also send a Skype contact request to Peace News Now. It'll be accepted, and then I will put you across the airwaves. We have a special guest with us this first hour. It's Angela Keaton of antiwar.com, and I look forward to asking her some questions about anti-war, where it's headed, and about what's going on in Syria. Maybe she's got some uh, information about that. Great place to check out the headlines. Also, coming up, we're, we'll be talking about Lois Lerner tries to barge into her neighbor's home to evade questions. <laughs> this is a pretty funny video. Uh, Keene's New Hampshire Robin Hood makes reason.com. A judge has ruled on the Ferguson cops five second rule saying that people can't protest in the streets uh, if they are moving around, if, if they aren't moving for more than five seconds. Plus a boy records some amazing video of the cops smashing into his father's car uh, and then tasing him and taking him away in cuffs. And finally, raw milk and food rights reach the Wisconsin Supreme Court. We have a press release for you from the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund. All that coming up and more on Peace News Now, plus your calls. But first, let's go to our guest, 
Angela Keaton joins us from antiwar.com. She's in LA. So good to be with us. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Angela. Thank you. This is actually really, really an honor. I've been really enjoying the heck out of your show since I, I've been on an LRN listening binge since Scott Horton um, has returned to LRN, which I think is really the, the natural home for the Scott Horton show. LRN just has an amazing amount of peace and anti-war programming. Wow, I agree. And I love listening to Scott. I loved listening to him uh, when his show was anti-war radio. And now I love listening to him now that it's the Scott Horton show. I'm wearing my antiwar.com shiny badge today on my lapel. So uh, viewers who are watching at home at peacenewsnow.com slash live can can see that uh, I am a supporter of antiwar.com. And I love wearing this pin out uh, it's got the red, white, and blue, so it appears patriotic and <laughs> it attracts a lot of eyes, but then they see anti-war. Hmm. And uh, it is a great conversation starter. So you can get your own at shinybadges.com. Are they still doing a fundraiser for anti-war there, Angela? You, you know, Davi Barker, um, who's you know one of the, uh, the, 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 uh, brain, the brain trust behind Bitcoin, not bombs, of which antiwar.com is a big part of, um, makes amazing pins, and he he handles our pins. So um, you know, however that works, I just let uh, I just let Davi and the guys handle it. I, I you know, it just I don't know how the magic works, but the pins show up, and it's it's great. And <laughs> well, if you go to Bitcoin, not bombs, which I, I'm sure I, I know this is all cross promoting with everyone shows, but Bitcoin, not bombs, is a, definitely a, 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 a site to check out where you can see the work of MK Lords and. Uh, you know, see just kind of the ways we're trying to apply peace. It's one of my favorite websites because it really focuses on something that I think we could all get behind is a voluntary currency and promoting peace. That's what it all comes down to. I want to see an end to these bombs being dropped on innocent people around the world. And I know one way to do that is to disempower the American empire by stopping using their currency. So Bitcoin is a fantastic way to do that. I encourage listeners to donate Bitcoin both on my show and to antiwar.com. I have a QR code, in fact, on the screen and at Bitcoin and at um, peacenewsnow.com slash donate. So Let's talk about antiwar.com, Angela, because to me, you are synonymous with antiwar.com. But as I found out in our uh, pre-show interview, uh, antiwar.com existed long before you. So c tell us what the website's about, a little bit about its history, and how you jumped in. Well, it, it, the history began in uh, late December of 1995. Eric Garris, our, our principal founder, bought the URL. And I think at the time that was uh, Clinton's Wars in uh, you know. In, well, you know, Clinton was doing wars, but the site really became kind of a full-time effort by the time the U.S. went into Kosovo. So really, it was an outgrowth of the Clinton, the Clinton era wars, which most of us have forgotten about now. But, you know, Clinton uh, Clinton was, uh, you know, bombing Iraq every three days or shelling it every three days, roughly on average. I think my source material for that is um, Dirty Wars, and all the Jeremy Scahill. But, yeah, they, they, they're, they're, we've been at war for Iraq for a long time, and the U.S. is always at war because we're a giant empire. But that's where... Um, antiwar.com that's when it officially started it, it goes actually back um the founders were eric garris justin Ramondo, uh, alexia gilmore and colin hunter and for those of you who are libertarian history nuts you know those were the uh, mem they were members of murray rothbard's radical caucus two of the libertarian party and so yeah the roots go way back to that and you know they were kind of classic the classic rothbardian idea that the war is the worst thing the state does and it absolutely is that you know of all the things the state does, it's the worst. It steals it steals money from from people out you know who have no power to kill uh, poor people all over the world. It's really a horrible, horrible thing, and it's something that every presidency does. And I'm, I'm, this is nothing new for libertarians. And we know you know the party affiliations mean nothing. It's just the war party. Now but, I um, go to antiwar.com regularly for headlines because I do a peace centric show and I want to know what's happening all over the world. Antiwar.com does a fantastic job of covering the stories that the mainstream media just won't dig into. So uh, talk a little bit about that and how you do story selection. Oh gosh, it's a great uh, concept. But it's a great idea that we do story selections. When I started back, I, I came to I, I first uh, sorry, I first met the people involved with uh, antiwar.com 
in 2006 when uh, my buddy uh, in Austin, Scott Horton, and my collaborator on a lot of radio projects, had uh, began to work as the link editor for Justin Armando, which uh, Justin was uh, one of the, you know, kind of the first people to do hyperlinking in articles instead of footnotes. So this is kind of the way that antiwar.com really kind of set itself apart in addition to being, um, you know, not partisan. I mean, we don't push, we're not selling the libertarian agenda. And, you know, we have everyone in the old thing, we would probably certainly say it, everyone from Pappy Ken to Noam Chomsky, it's on, you know, they're on there. Um, but the story, when we had a bigger staff, when we had more money, and that was during, I think, really, when things were really kind of together during the Ron Paul, you know, Ron Paul revolution, because that's what really kind of re rejuvenated the anti war effort. Uh, you know, in 2008, when I, this is when I came on full time. It was about, it was going to be a really unusual time because that was when Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton was going to, you know, that was deciding who was going to be the nominee. So um, we had a bigger staff then. But what it, what happens is we receive links um, and we search for links. And everyone who's, search, everyone who's involved with antiabor.com is responsible for searching links. When I'm, you know, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. And as, and I'm probably the least, the least uh, knowledgeable on foreign policy. But we all do it. We put we put links in there all the time. When we wake up in the middle of the night, we put in links. We're constantly reading. Everyone's constantly reading, particularly uh, Scott Horton and Jason Ditz. And Jason is our news editor. And so if you go to news.antiwar.com, you're going to see the, and I really want to push these uh, these articles, these news articles, and I should say they're really news shorts. Jason takes um, of the dozens and dozens and dozens, let's say, of, of articles on a particular story that day. You know, everyone's putting something out, the BBC, the Guardian, and a lot of obscure sites that are reputable, and a lot of, let's say, good good writers, real journalists. So they'll kind of compile it, and Jason will condense it down for something between three to 500 words, and makes it really readable and understandable to normal people, and it, it makes, it, it just, it's a really, it's a really amazing thing what Jason does. And all of this is managed every day by our webmaster, Eric Garris, who basically starts the day, you know, you know, we start the earliest crack of dawn and the site is finished at midnight Eastern time. So you're always seeing a new fresh page every night. The only time we don't change the editorial opinions are, uh, are Saturday, Saturday evening. So that's sort of the, 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 